Hello everyone, it's Ben. I'm back again with some more Drunken Peasants related announcements. Tonight, Tuesday, September 18th at 5.15 p.m., we will be streaming live on the Drunken Peasants Underground channel. There's a link to both the channel and tonight's stream in the description below. We will be joined by the guys from the Insomnist podcast. Tonight will also feature our Food for Thought segment where you, the viewers, get to send in your questions to Billy the Fridge. Shoot us an email at drunkenpeasantsinbox at gmail.com with your question for Billy, and if it's good enough, we'll read it on the show. Also, we're currently running a viewer survey that we would like all of you to participate in. Visit podsurvey.com slash peasants. After you complete the survey, you'll be automatically entered into a contest for a chance to win a $100 Amazon gift card. Help out the show and possibly win $100 in the process. Survey link is also in the description below. While you're looking at the description, don't forget to bookmark our Amazon links down below so you can use them anytime you want to purchase something from Amazon. It helps the show simply by using the links to buy things you are going to buy anyway. Finally, we wanted to remind everyone to sign up to catch this month's Patreon private show. It's going to take place Monday, September 24th, and it will feature the return of Spin to You Spew trivia where I will be taking on Fat Pat from Poisoning the Well. Don't miss the absolute drunken carnage. Click the Patreon link below in the description to sign up for a $5 or more pledge to catch the show. That's all for this time, guys. Glanderson Booper. episode 480 and today we are joined by the guys from the insomnist podcast hello insomnist people what's up thanks for joining us today are Dude, you guys for having us on are you guys excited that the 18th or the 17th anniversary of 9-11 is fucking gone and nobody got a plane flown into them ever yes that's that's I nice. mean, that hasn't happened on any of the anniversaries of 9-11. You always kind of wonder if it's going to be that year, right? right? If I was going to plan was... something like that, it would be on a totally different day, because that's the day everyone expects. Didn't one happen in like the UK on 11-9, because their dates are backwards? <laughs> like November 9th or whatever? No, I don't believe so, but huh. I could be wrong. I was, on a, I was on a plane this last September 11th. Actually. I bet flights are actually cheap that day. You know, also uh, Friday the 13th. No flights are the same i've noticed that on friday the 13th i've gotten cheap flights before really in the past well, that makes yeah i yeah. love friday the 13th my birthday is august 13th so it's happened on friday the 13th yeah, a lot a lot of people who have birthdays on the 13th it'll fall on a friday every now and those then. are usually the birthdays where i get like a hand job or something <laughs> okay that i don't have to give to myself uh all. <laughs> really quick a few announcements uh, just first announcing some guests we're going to have on the 22nd. We're going to have Dick Masterson joining us. I don't know who's going to be on with him yet. Um, I guess Monday Matt didn't get our invitation. Damn. Did you get lost in the mail? Um, and we you know, flag you know, down. Keemstar still calls him Matt Mundane. <laughs> yeah. Well, <that's>, <laughs> Keem does that to yeah. everybody. He used to call me Billy the Fat all the time, and now he now calls he's me nice. Billy the Fridge. Yeah, he's he's nice got, to you. I got lucky that. Uh, on the twenty fifth, we're gonna have uh, the quartering and Magog on together. Hmm. Nice. I, yeah, I, I don't know if they know each other or what, um, but yeah, that should be that should be interesting too. Uh, yeah, Patreon, as you saw in the intro, 
I, I don't think you need to hear that much more about it because I just played it. But sign up for Patreon if you want to catch the fucking craziness that's going to be happening on this coming Monday. Uh, you know, Fat Patty's going down. He's not even fat, so that's such a bullshit. It's fat with a yeah, pH. Yeah, I know, whatever. So he's he's, he's using a, a 90s... Uh, You're not even pie and people call you Ben Pie. Well, it's AI. Yeah, well, that's pH. Yeah, you're right. So, you're yeah. right. I'm I, claiming to be a pie, and I shouldn't do that because I'm not. I'm always right. Uh, but I'm... But uh, <laughs> Streamlabs, you can use the link below to send us Streamlabs, or you can give Google some money and send us Super Chats. Either way, I'll take it, but you can use either one, and then at the end of each segment, we'll read through all of them. If you want to send us content, like questions for Billy the Fridge or any video content, you can send it to drunkenpeasantsinbox at gmail.com. Check out our Discord. Uh, since I've been mentioning the Discord, it's become more active, and I've actually been going in there more often now. So join our Discord, link below, do it. Billy and I go in there and we uh, we post dick pics. Yeah, I jump in all voice the time. chat when people are in there, so you guys should uh, talk amongst each other and I might surprise you and drop in and say, big butts, big butts, big butts, yeah. and then leave. All right, and oh, also the Alter Perspective this Thursday. Check out the Alter Perspective this Thursday at 6.15 p.m. We're going to have Landon Knoll and the Geek Room. Ooh. Landon Knoll, Dr. Landon Knoll. Lord Ogden. Yeah. I love that guy. Yeah. Very guy brilliant guy. Brilliant. Uh, and then uh, also this Saturday, uh, another DP, uh, like unofficial DP related show. It's called Underhaven, and it's going to be on at 3.15 p.m. Eastern Time with Pimmo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, uh, I believe that's on Twitch. All the relevant links are down below. Uh, before you move on, I would like to thank our Patreon members that like give the top donations. The, the sweet, the sweet, sweet boys to help this show go. Uh, Finn Balls, Twilight City Studios, Josh DeForge, Manamies, Manny, Dylan Grace, Empyrean, yes. Carl Rove, Stephen Mukowski, and Chris Harris. You're all very sweet boys and girls. Thank you for your continuing patronage of the Drunken Peasants podcast. Thank it's you. People like you and people like you watching at home that keep us alive. It's true. It's true. Ben was like, Ben was like, dude, I'd be dead right now if it wasn't for fucking all the the lovely Drunken Peasants fans. I probably would. Be. <laughs> <laughs> that that yeah. was after he drank like a ton of drinks, though. So. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. You know what? I, I I'll do nine eleven mode. I, I've been doing nine eleven. Do you mode. have alcohol left? Yeah, yeah. I oh, have wow. some stashed away. <laughs> you found it. Damn. Yeah, yeah. I. Uh, when are you going up with the uh, fat pad again? This coming Monday. Uh, for the for the Patreon private show, and the way it works is we do this trivia game, and at the end of each round, whoever has the higher score, uh. Or I'm sorry. Whoever has the lower score has to spin the wheel. In the, in which case, Billy will spin the wheel for Pat since he won't actually be here. Yeah. And uh, you have to do whatever's on the wheel, and it's usually taking a shot of some kind of liquor. And uh, we just keep doing that until someone is either like, uh, "I can't continue," or they vomit everywhere, or they pass out uh, live on stream. Oh no, that's just <laughs> that's not so, fair. That's not hey, bad, bad, more bad, great white. screenshots. Yeah. He doesn't even do trivia. I don't even do trivia. What are you talking about? <laughs> Dude, you know who's hey. scary good at trivia? Who? Digby. Really? His tism is real, dude. He is so fucking good at that game. Really? Yes. He's young. He's won every one I've played with him. Remember, I, he played with us once, yeah. and he came back from behind yeah, at the end. Yeah, he started and, very poorly, yep. and then he like snuck in and won. Yes. Got me by like I think fifty or hundred points, something really close. I was very bummed. I was like, I can't believe I just lost to Digby. But now that I hear he's really he's, good, he's good. Then I'm I'm not mad. I lost to him because he was behind in that one. Would, I, I thought I, I'm still good. No, no, I'm because still good. I thought I thought he just lucked out. I'd still, pat but it's actually on the back. actually I was just really they, Billy really got one too many good. participation ribbons in his life, and he actually thinks he's accomplished things. Dude, <laughs> those are the best ribbons. 
Like, that's no, what, the, is that what your mommy told yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. She was like, these are the best <laughs> ribbons. I was like, why doesn't my ribbon have a number, mommy? Uh, wh- why do the other kids have one, two, and three? <laughs> and she'd be like, oh, participation are the best ribbons. That's why all the sweet boys get them. Oh, okay. My mommy right. always told me because I didn't try hard enough. Well, Your there parents- you go. Some parents are honest and some parents aren't. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sometimes honesty is not the best policy. Look at uh, someone Someone did a wonderful Photoshop of this photo. It's that <laughs> weird guy that we watch from time to time. I want to call him Corpse Manlet for some reason. He's he's not quite a corpse, though. No, he doesn't look like a corpse. He, he, he does look like a former child actor that had gr- like grown up and... Never lost his virginity. He's got some weird. What is that under his ear? It's like a weird. Skin I have flap. no. I don't know what's going on. I, uh, yeah, yeah. There, there's a That's whole lot tongue. of weirdness. We 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 always look at him and we're like, oh man, his hair. I don't know what's going on with his hair. Maybe he's got a pituitary gland condition. I don't know what is. Yeah, there's something going it's on. Probably pituitary gland. But I like this because it looks like he's jerking it to Pimp Monk, who looks like Pimp Monk looks like he's getting a a BJ. <laughs> this is this is the kind of porn this guy watches. Pimp Monk getting a BJ. Is there First such thing that that stream lasted all night and he uh, slept through his alarm too? Yeah, people were. <laughs> I, I was asleep, but I woke up to a bunch of messages like, "Pen, you need to call Pimp Monk and wake him up and tell him to turn off his stream." On, <laughs> and I woke up like, "Fuck, what what happened last night?" <laughs> he was like, he was like, "God damn it." I made like 63 bucks sleeping. That's more than I make when I'm awake. Yeah. <laughs> he, had more, he had more viewers. Oh, yeah. 73 viewers. That was it. Uh, 73 insane. viewers. Wow. Just watching me sleep. I don't get it. That's more than I get when I'm awake. <laughs> I was like, damn. Damn, Pimpy. Fall asleep. Hey, it's nice to see more. some of our friends in chat. What's yeah, up, that's friendos? awesome. We got some people. Yeah, we got some friends. We got Tom Pinoid and Accelerate. Yeah, what's up, guys? And I saw Obi-Wan in there. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Yeah, There's some we got some really good people. I mean, our our fan base is pretty small, but but the people who are there are pretty awesome, and they keep coming back. So it's a special little corner of the internet, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's definitely we're we're definitely a strange corner of the internet. So we're good <laughs> <in> this show, <laughs> Pim Monk should do feeder streams where he just like he eat like he he'll buy a like a Whopper and eat it, and all those creepy <laughs> people that like to watch fat people eat. We'll watch it. Do you think that he's pretty yeah. enough, though? Does that matter? I think. I like to I don't think, think it when does. people approached me, I like to think it was because I was like the it's fat not man always, Marilyn Monroe. It's not always a sexual thing, either. It's huh. Sometimes it's just like a... Like Pure a, fascination. Yeah, yeah, fascination. That, that's yeah. the perfect word. Like the mukbang? <laughs> make some comparisons, but I don't want to offend Billy. <laughs> if you do a uh, mukbang, is that what it's called? Mukbang? If you do that with finger foods, is it a finger bang? <laughs> Welcome to the dad joke segment. <laughs> <sighs> I'm going to drink a bunch of water at the beginning of the show because I have a feeling the 9-11 mode is going to pop off eventually. Damn. They they don't spread it out. They do it like all at one time. 9-11, 9-11, 9-11. Yeah, last night you got hit I- with like a ton at the end of the thing and then it was almost like reliving the george bush presidency over and over again because george bush was constantly saying 9-11 9-11 how good would a groundhog's day movie be on 9-11 and you had to try and like stop 9-11 from happening every day but yeah, finally bush and giuliani both squeezed every drop out of 9-11 <laughs> I don't think I would make it there on time. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to hijack yeah. the plane myself. Yeah, if if you started on the West Coast, it'd be really hard to even do that. Yeah. Yeah, that would be that would be a really long movie. Yeah. Maybe you don't even start on the West Coast. Maybe your alarm goes off at five a.m. and, and, and you, you wake like, up in Manhattan. Yeah, and you have like an hour I mean, and whatever. There's did the, it, the easiest way to stop it would be would would be a way that you would end up getting in trouble though. Good luck. Man. Yeah, because. Oh fuck! <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna have to go grab a bottle. I will in a second. Right. But but the easiest way to stop 9/11 would be to shoot down the planes before they hit the building. So you'd have to acquire right. some sort of anti-aircraft uh, weaponry. Or, you know, an but then you shoot a- the- intelligence apparatus that knew what it was doing. That w- that would have helped. Well, sure, sure. Yeah. I, I mean, to know about the we had beforehand. we had a lunatic here steal a fucking plane. And fly it around in a circle for hours. Was it hours? It, it was a while. Wow. But but anyway, 
he had fighter jets on him almost immediately. Like as soon as they saw yeah. the plane take off, they had That's fighter jets following this guy ready to shoot him down if he was about to run into any buildings. I don't know why that <laughs> didn't happen on 9-11, but whatever. My favorite part of uh, Groundhog's Day was when Bill Murray just decided... going back to Groundhog's Day. I, I think a 9-11 Groundhog's Day movie would be the, the hotness, and if someone's watching right now, write it so I can watch it. But... But it was when he gave up. The movie up where just... they had to experience 9-11 over and over and over yes. again. Yes. And the cr- only way to stop Jesus, it would be... dark. Yeah, the what? only way to stop reliving it would be to stop the, 9/11, the attack. 9-11, right? So you got to stop it. But you, can't, you can't know. You can't know what you know now. You have to, you know, wake up. It's yeah, of course. You wake up, up like, oh my god, this is the worst day ever. It would be the point of repeating it. Then it would be the same thing Because you have to try and stop it. Retain your memory. You have to try and stop it. Yeah. You I, I retain think, your memory every time you wake up. Otherwise... Well, you do retain your memory, though. That's what happened to Bill Murray and Groundhog's Day. Right. Because he, he had ran into Ned Ryerson every day in the puddle. Yeah. Like yeah. that's that's important. Like he and then and he's like he's like oh it was Bin Laden and they're like who the fuck is Bin Laden? Nobody cares about him. That's George yeah. Bush's friend. And then you, like by the end he realizes that nine eleven was an inside job, so he just has to relive the day every day uh, and become like and a nine eleven god. I think you get in a lot of trouble if you uh, predicted it and then it actually happened. You'd have some explaining to do for sure. <laughs> I just think it would make a really interesting movie. That's all. Someone should write it so I can. Well, watch that, it. that that would be. I mean, you'd you'd have to he'd like have to try over and over again to convince people who don't remember anything, and eventually he would work his way up, and then eventually he'd get picked up by the CIA. And yeah, yeah I could see. Yeah, that. it'd be like uh, the Notebook, but with Osama bin Laden. He has that string where, like, Bill Murray tried to kill himself every day to end it, and it never yeah. worked. So he has this string where he just shows up when the planes fly in, and you see a, a view of the plane going right to his face, and, pff, yeah. and the alarm you clock see goes him standing at the base of the tower, and a big old piece of concrete just squashes him. Yeah, like, he's just, every day, he, like, he jumps, he jumps out. He goes in, and he, like, he calls, like, a... Uh, a, a fire alarm at, right before so everybody evacuates and they all evacuate so he saves all the lives but the other ones still go like into the pentagon and stuff and he, he or tried. he could even get really desperate and like figure out what flight it is get on that yeah. flight and then blow it up yeah the, all these scenarios could play out like i think like once you get but, past the fact that this was one of the greatest tragedies to hit American soil, at least in our lifetime, uh, once you get over that, you can realize how much storytelling there is there. It could it could actually be kind of good if you did it dramatic, like not not Bill Murray, but you know, make it more serious. There'd have but, to be a. But you'd have, what you'd have to figure out is what is the what is the thing that he does? Like, what's the change? What what's the what makes it like keep going like in in Groundhog Day instead I, I, of repeating? I think uh, he meets a girl and he uh, convinces <laughs> her not up. to go into work that day, and uh, yeah, you know it becomes a thing. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. he <laughs> it, it can't come down to a love story, can it? That's what they did in Groundhog's Day. No, please, Too for the easy. love of God, no. I think yeah. what happens, I think this is how it should fix, and this is really dark, and people will think it's fucked up. He should get a ticket on the plane that didn't make it to the White House. And he should go full on ISIS and fly the plane into the White House. And then that's what makes him, it allows him to die. Because he, he fulfilled 9-11. The fourth plane that ended up in Pennsylvania goes into the fucking White House. And like, holy oh, shit, this shit. whole time, it was conditioning him to be the fucking agent. The fucking is Taliban dark, agent. Like it. <laughs> it's so fucked up. Happy birthday, America. Yeah. You know it's a good sign. I don't see any. I don't see any move warns in the chat. So that's. I'm surprised. Wow. <laughs> I mean, of course, we're so interesting. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, nailed it. This is the future of cinema. So man. a new Captain Marvel film trailer was just released. No, is this Captain Marvel mm-hmm. from the Marvel universe or from the DC universe? The the Captain Marvel from the DC universe is now called Shazam. It can no longer call itself Captain Marvel. Oh, really? Yeah, which Wait, sucks because that was the original Captain Marvel. Yeah, they're making uh, Captain Wait, Shazam? Marvel and Shazam a movie, right? Yeah, Shazam. Yeah. Shazam was a re- yeah, but they're not calling him Captain With Marvel. Levy. I don't. I don't think they are. Yeah, but right. it's it's also becoming a movie. Right, right. But this is this is the Marvel ver the female, uh, you know, M- Ms. Marvel. Yeah, the cool thing of Carol Danvers, about right? Captain Marvel. The the cool thing about the the Shazam movie is that like that's a little kid, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, His superpower is uh, to become like. But originally, Superman. the wizard's name, the wizard that gives him all the powers, his name was Shazam. Okay. In the original right. story. They show that in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he finds like this old cave and meets a wizard and basically turns into Superman. Did Captain but Marvel? Anyway, I want to say are shitting on the Captain Marvel. Oh, oh, the trailer. Tra oh, yeah, yeah. Go we're we're gonna watch some of it, and uh, basically, I'm gonna have to stop it every like 20 seconds. Did Captain Marvel safe. and DC come out oh, before that? Marvel Comics came out? Yes. Huh. Uh, actually, Captain Marvel came out before DC Comics came out. Really? It was an acquired property later on. DC acquired a lot of other. Uh, comic book properties over time so well let's see the one that's not the kid this is the blonde here it is are these stories really that similar oh damn dude why did they have to go there or are they show it like to it, remind us that it's the 90s right okay this so is when this is set in <laughs> it's yeah it's that, a subtle product placement it's I, not even though a product that no longer exists. Yeah. So it's, why does Captain it's setting the time period? Why does Captain us? Marvel want a 9/11 blockbuster video? <laughs> it's fucked up, man. They're edgy. I wonder if she what section she fell into. War is a universal language. You know, I need the porn section. I know a renegade soldier when I see one. I know a renegade. Never occurred to me that one might come from above. Why would that have uh, never occurred to Nick Fury? Because this is the '90s. It's before the fucking That's Avengers hey, came together. Hey, he if this is really hold on, above. hold on, wait. If this is really the '90s, hold on, wait. If this was really the 90s, the Nick Fury should be white and he should have hair. Whoa! <laughs> All right, David Hasselhoff. What? Oh, in the okay, man. was Nick Fury white in the 90s? He was David Hasselhoff in the 90s. Kind of. Dave, no, he David we Hasselhoff out, played uh, Nick Fury in the 90s. Only yeah, because he yeah, looked like the comic really book version of it. Well, right? he still played him. And yeah. and look, like we're going back to the 90s. This isn't the 90s. This is a retelling of the 90s. So like everything now, oh. we make our superheroes for the now. I can't wait till they redo Django Unchained. <laughs> and make so, make him a white trans uh, transhumanist, where he turns into a robot. One arm, though. <laughs> one arm. All right, so let's skip ahead a little bit here. Uh, that was a new Marvel logo, by the way, guys. Oh. Be told, I was ready to hang it up till I miss Wait. you today. I saw the dude so, from Pulp Oh my Fiction. gosh, you guys, he doesn't have his eye patch. Oh my gosh, it's going to be the how he, Nick Fury lost his eye origin oh story. Oh god, you yeah, they are yes. going to do that. Of course they're this, going to. I've been I've been waiting for that for years. Yeah, this he has an eye. Too. <laughs> no, but in the 90s Fiction. Nick Fury was white and he didn't and he didn't have an eye. He was missing an eye. They should tell the story of how he turned black and lost his hair. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you. <laughs> Maybe it's all in the film. I mean, it's only the trailer. True. It's hard to explain. In 2019, women saved the world memories. from men. I see flashes. I can tell. Our, I, I I don't want to see it. I'm going to see it twice. Of course you, know you are. How many female U.S. Air Force F-15 fighter pilots there are? 15? I think there's one. Is it is it Carol Danvers? No. You are a mark for like <laughs> ridiculous movies. No, like, that's not true. For Hollywood, you're it's a Hollywood true. mark. It's not true. Yes, you are. No, you patronize all the shit that that Hollywood spits out at you. It's, you know why I do? Why? Because I want to relate to human beings, and this is what human beings enjoy. I'm trying to be more human, Ben. You should be celebrating that. How does that make you more human? Because humans love this shit. Okay, well, humans existed know, long humans. before this garbage yeah, ever but existed. No, humans always sucked up garbage bullshit. It's so you just watch these things to study humans? Yes. Yeah, uh, I, I he's full of shit. Why do you think Billy is the blockers? master of the loop de loop argument? I'm really good. He'll say one <laughs> really totally good. stupid thing, and then you argue with him about it, and before you know it, you're not even talking about the same thing anymore. I think I have. Ben really idea. likes showing my tricks off. <laughs> What is this? It's real. It's Ma time, Magician secrets revealed. 
Was it? She's in a Tesla coil? Hold up. Is this Green Lantern? No, Green Lantern is DC. Why does it look like Green Lantern Corpse? I don't know. What makes a man? Is it the power in his hand? Is it his quest for glory? What makes her a no hero? That was cute. Oh. The future is female, y'all. She just punched an old lady in the face. I'm pretty sure is that... that uh, it's Coulson. Yes. Yeah, Agent Coulson that's, that's looking part of younger. The trailer right here. I'm pretty sure that the, the way uh, Rogue from the X-Men get, gets her like super strength and flight and everything is because she steals it from mm -hmm. Captain, Captain Marvel. Marvel. Yeah. Pretty sure. She absorbs it. Yeah. I think that's exactly what happened. But but the the cinematic Marvel universe has no X-Men in it for now. So they, they will. They can't I know they will. I'm afraid. I hope it's better than the Fox <laughs> one. Dude, you argued with me the other day. You actually said that the first Fox X-Men movie was good too. You're just it you was, like garbage. It was good for its time. This was before no. this is before comic yeah, books evolved. Good. That it was, was the, terrible. No, it was a thing. Was like everybody the very was first doing one. It. We had with Blade. Yeah, the first one with Patrick Stewart. Yeah, it was great. They made, they made better ones after that. I think the first one was really dumb. The dynamic between Magneto and Patrick Stewart was something special. All right. Magneto and Patrick Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> like when Professor X rolled in and then Gandalf was there, they had great chemistry. That was a fucking dope ass on screen performance between two men, one that's gay, one that's bi, but none of that came into play. They were just leaders of little kids. That was cool. We need you. What was that? I'm not what you Does think. Does like a helmet thing that makes it look like the flash? This sucks. I'm sorry. Are you sure? Yeah. No, well, I, I mean, know, man. Sometimes trailers are just terrible. It, trailers are supposed to show the good shit better. that make you want to watch. But this is a, this is the first look well, at her, right? This is the very first look. Yeah. yeah. This every every scene here basically is people reacting to Miss Marvel or 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 Captain Marvel showing up. This is just our first look at Brie Larson. We're getting like her in action without yeah. too much giving away. This is this is her debut into the Marvel Universe, and this is important because everybody's saying Captain Marvel is the strongest on-screen character that the Marvel Universe has released on she's a film Superman. today. Yeah, and she's a woman. I think woman. Marvel's got a pretty good track record, and I'm I'm willing to give us a chance to wait for a, a better trailer to come out. I bet you it's the better first, than Wonder Woman. The first woman. Venom trailer made it look terrible, and then the new ones make it look actually pretty goddamn. Yeah, good. I hope I hope so. Venom's good. I really do. You'll like, like it I no just watch the whole movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I, this the thing, this thing, I don't have to like things to watch them. I know. I went and saw like a Reese Witherspoon movie that was absolutely horrible. And like I, I, I would never watch it again. Well, that's why we're going to watch Egghead's dad's movies. Uh, well, you know, if it doesn't kill you, you know what they say. If, yeah, if it doesn't uh. kill you, it makes you strong. You know, the other night I was doing a stream on this channel and uh, I watched uh, one of Egghead's dad's movie trailers and I recognized someone in one of the scenes. Little what? Egghead. <laughs> no way. <laughs> baby oh, Eggy. Little Eggy. Little baby Eggy. Look, Look at him. Yeah. I thought that was... That's for real, isn't it? That is yeah. Egghead. That's Egghead, and he's playing as a kid in one of his dad's movies. He's playing his a name student. is Sp his name's Speedy. Speedy. So, so last night, he... last night when I was streaming and I got drunk, I went into the uh, the DP Discord and changed Egghead's name to Speedy. Bye. Is he more, less, or the same amount of cringy in this? Oh, uh, he's less cringy. He's just not that good of an actor. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> well, it's, it's terrible, but he's not trying, so that makes it even it less cringy. The equation for me. He's what was what was his line? He was like, "It's like, uh, no, ma'am, I didn't do my homework. Cause when I grow up, I will be a cowboy just like my buddy Stormy. Stormy." Yeah. Everybody wow. in the, the 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 movies, they have the worst fucking names. Like his dad's name is Tex Clap Texas Clap Saddle. Te yeah, Texas Clap Saddle. That sounds like a yeah. like a weird S T D you would get in the yeah. West. Yeah. If you get you get clapped from somebody's saddle, that's That's what happens when you get <laughs> butt fucked in <laughs> Dallas. You get Texas Clap Saddle. Yeah, the worst chafe ever, if nothing else. Yeah. You got a bad case of the clap saddle, boy. No, not just the clap saddle. You've got Texas clap saddle. What? 
Texas clap saddle. He this is bigger. The only remedy is to pour on some sweet, sweet barbecue sauce. You kind of sounded like Jake right there. <laughs> well, well, well. Yeah, we haven't told the DP audience how the yeah the we Jake's, haven't the Jake thing garbage went. movie. Oh will fuck! Be in line with Chris Chan for the upcoming Sonic movie. Oh, BTW, Sonic's getting another new cartoon. Why? I'll probably watch the Sonic movie. I have zero interest in that. I don't shit. have interest either. I'll probably take my niece and nephew people to go. Who are into Sonic? Uh, yeah. Oh, tell, dude. Tell your Jake the Snake story while I take a <laughs> shot. <laughs> All right. So uh, we we show up to the show, and the, we go to the doorman, and the doorman's like, okay, just heads up, Billy. Uh, Jake's in a bad mood. And so I'm walking in. I'm like, fuck. Like, yeah, yeah. And I was like trying to be really careful not to piss off Jake. I was like, yeah. Yeah, that's one dude you don't want to piss off. I go to do sound check. <laughs> Ben's sitting next to me. I'm talking to uh, my, my freak friend, uh, the Mighty Lurch. And uh, up from behind, somebody puts his well, he put his hand on your shoulder. He's or, like, he just kind of like he walks creeps up, up behind, behind Ben, yeah, and he's, he's like, like, he's like, well, well, well. And I was like, holy shit, that is Jake. This like, no one else has that voice. We meet again. Yeah, that's what he said to you, <laughs> just like that. And like, he was in a good mood. Like, we we got to hang out and kick it with him. Ben was talking to him about like old wrestling stories, and this big titted hot chick yeah, shows up. And yeah, talk, talks I, ben. I fight like. Okay, I I don't normally get nervous to talk to people, but when it's like an old school wrestler, I do because yeah. I, I mark out. So I, I had to drink. I had to have some drinks to like be calmer. When I finally decided to talk to Jake, yes, a big titted blonde bitch walks up and starts <laughs> talking to him. It totally steals his attention. Yep. I was like, damn it. Now, did that redheaded kid ever end up calling him a pussy is what I want to know. I don't think he did. Was he gonna call him a pussy? I was trying to talk him. I was, oh, okay. I, it was just me being drunk, like fucking with him. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was it was fun. We uh we, we there's this like a uh, big uh wrestling podcast dude Brian Alvarez. He does uh the a podcast with Dave Meltzer and all types of shit. He was uh, he was there in the crowd. And he like started tweeting about me, and uh, it was came up and talked to him. I, I thought it was pretty cool because I'm a, I'm a wrestling fan. I've been listening to him for a long time, so it was a fun night. Got Jake, me and Jake chopped it up a bit. It was good times. Everybody had a good time. Everybody that showed up got super drunk. It was like super heavy pour at this bar. You you've been to the Fun House, Ryan? That's where I first met you. We we both were there. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's, yeah, they do. Uh, I mean, I was standing the whole night, but yeah, they do. Yeah, it was super yeah. heavy pour. Everybody was wasted. And I'm not drinking, so I'm sitting there looking at all my friends getting knockout drunk, and I'm like, oh. Well, I mean, they're they're hosting a show called Drunken Peasants. They're like, fuck it. Let's let them have it. <laughs> that's every time. Every time though. I've ever been to that place, <laughs> it's oh, really? like that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then I got molested by Ronald McFondle. Gave me a big clown kiss and left paint all over my face. Oh, congratulations! I was not. I was not proud. I, I was hurt. So I'm going to read some streamlabs really quick, and then we're going to move on to uh, action news. Uh, Pinoid news. Are two dollars? Fat Pat looks like Jonah Hill if he ate Jesus. Mm. He does. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't think we're talking about the same person. <laughs> It's well, still funny. <laughs> Jonah Hill looks pretty Jonah slick Hill. right now. Like he's changed a bit. Obi Wan BD donated one dollars. Congratulations to Insomnus. My boys are finally all grown up. Aww. Love your biggest Obi -Wan fan, Obi Wan. Oh, nice. We he's love that our kid. number one, our our first fan, our number one fan. He's he's always there, and it's funny because he doesn't agree with a lot of the stuff that we say, a lot of our opinions, but he keeps coming back. And he's always just he always participates and makes good points. He like he challenges me all the time. That's a very it. rare type of fan to have because usually if you go against yeah. any sensibility of a fan, they 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 change on you. How dare you? They turn you? on you. Yeah. How dare you? And we're like, he we just, didn't dare. He just makes good points. He has has actual discussions with us. It's crazy. We're but gonna yeah, we, we really appreciate him. And and we appreciate him too. Do you think that Egghead's bathtub was so dirty because he was used to washing up in a metal basin? I don't want to think about why Egghead's bathtub is so dirty. 
Someone literally just asked, did you meet Brian Alvarez at the Jake the Snake thing? Yeah. You, you just said that, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. It was cool. He, like, tweeted about me and stuff, and a bunch of people were like, hey, that's ben, Billy the Fridge. He does ass. such a boring shot glass. You need a more interesting one, like Billy's oh, belly button. This one didn't, like, show up, but we just heard it. It's tech for it, and he gave another 9 11. Oh. And we're gonna get, we're gonna move on now. I'm gonna do the shot and we'll read any Streamlabs you wanna send between now and then uh, after the segment. But if you, if you give over $5, the uh, text to speech will read it. So you get immediate, you get immediate, immediate attention over $5. Immediate gratification. You can hear it? Yeah, we can yeah. hear it. Too, okay. For the record. Yeah, I thought you could, because I, I rearranged the way the audio works here, so now that people right, can right. hear that shit. All right. Oh, my God. oh, shit, wrong one. Oh, yeah, Alicia was our first actual sub. Obi-Wan was our first supporter. Ah. Oh. All right. <laughs> I love that doggy. Never get so old. All right, here's uh, here's kind of a local story. Seattle repeals controversial business tax. Hmm. Did that just happen? I'm not even sure what 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 tax is it. It's called the head tax. You'll see. Well, mounting pressure from big companies uh, got the Seattle City Council scrambling. Uh, in fact, voting a just short time ago, seven to two to repeal that tax that they unanimously passed just last month. You remember that bill. It was aimed at helping the city combat its growing homelessness crisis by taxing big companies like Amazon and Starbucks even more. Right. Here now to discuss I, I the Roy Murdoch. I can't ignore it. Doesn't he look like uh, Tyler Grimace? Perry? Oh, Black Grimace? I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm not paying attention to what he's saying. Hamburger. So basically, uh, they were going to tax the bigger companies in Seattle. Uh, it was like, I think it, it, I can't remember how much it was, but it was per employee. And they were like going to take 50 bucks per employee. And they were going to use that to fund, to, to give housing to the homeless. Cause we have a, a huge homeless problem. And the reason be, and the reason for that is that the cost of housing has been driven up by employees from these, uh, large corporations. So that's, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Fox News contributor and National Review contributing editor, Ali Stuckey, CRTV.com host, and, how much and Katrina Pearson, is. Trump 2020 senior advisor. Ali, I want to start with you. And, and here's the th interesting thing about this. I applaud the fact that these companies push back. This is a problem that Seattle created, one of the wealthiest cities in America. There's no excuse for the homelessness crisis that's going on there. But Do you understand how it happened, though? I mean, uh, all, of the, all of these people were basically brought in to work for Amazon, to work for uh, Boeing, to work for all these huge companies, Microsoft, and they're making big money working for these companies. So naturally, because, you know, demand is so high, they're able to jack up the price for housing. Here. Huge, yeah. Because people can afford to pay a higher price. And the people who already live here, their yeah. property taxes are shooting up like crazy. It's called economics yeah but the people who have been here living here what for like know. like my grandmama she's had a house since uh little fucking my dad was a little babe in here and her the property tax is so high she's paying like people is 10 grand a month them also <laughs> drink. damn it i don't agree damn it i don't agree oh, that's a solution thinker right there josh like, a, lot, a lot of the homeless people are here because we offer great amenities for the homeless like seattle is like the hilton of homelessness oh if I, I mean, like, I prefer to live in a place, you know, if I had to live outside, I wouldn't live in a place where it rains so much, and I'd probably live in a place where it's warmer most of the year. But when it rains, well, it's, it's never that cold here. Like, we sometimes we have a stretch where it's super but what cold. What about, uh, like, San Diego, you know? Yeah, where they, San where they, Diego, Long Beach, anywhere along the West Coast. Yeah, it doesn't, uh, like, San Diego has pretty mild weather all year. And and it doesn't rain often. But the, here in Seattle, know? they get shower vouchers. They get uh, free heroin needles. They get all types of sweet shit. Like we got bonuses, man. Like if I was gonna be homeless anywhere in the world, it would be Venice Beach. But my second uh -huh. choice would be Seattle. You get all that shit in Cal any California city, pretty much. You think they give you free ones down on Venice Beach? 
They they invented that shit in California. Down on Venice Beach, you got this line of busker. I also uh, find some fault with too. Howard Schultz and and and, and um. And others who who, who are push progressive agendas, <laughs> which mean higher rubble, taxes rubble, rubble. for everyone else, but they don't want that for their own company. How the Abba Yuba Dubin fight, Albert? Companies. Wow. Exactly. Well, the least logical way to fight homelessness is to tax the Who's number one elf? job provider in a city. I mean, Seattle spent $68 million to No, it's the job provider causing the homeless problem. I, I'm sorry. Dollars right. on homelessness last year. And what do they have to show for it? A 4% increase in homelessness. So this is just another page out of the progressive uh, playbook. And maybe Starbucks and Amazon don't realize. We have cities of people living in tents. Uh, and and uh, one thing they're doing is they're they're creating tiny villages. It's like a it's like a village of tool sheds that homeless people live in. That's like one yeah, I thing. I think that, a lot of towns have that now. Yeah. Realize that, but this is just a bait and switch of saying, "Hey, if you give us more money, we'll solve all of your problems," despite the fact that we have no record whatsoever of actually solving problems. And Katrina, this is the microcosm of President with Trump. Is I mean, you may be right about what's causing the homeless problem, but the answer is not the government fucking it up they never they don't the the people who go for push for those policies they do it to get elected not because they want to help homeless people i mean they they literally they were letting homeless people live in uh the lobby of city hall for and a while and they, they definitely like, it's crazy i think it's everybody's interest to solve the homeless problem in seattle i heard bezos donated two billion dollars to try and help fix this after this fell he should through. also well he should be donating money to uh paying taxes too probably yeah. i just yeah. don't think throwing money at is is the solution we have to look at the alternative maybe a here. temporary fix but there was a time in the early 90s where seattle was just known as the gateway to alaska it was a nothing city all the business had pretty much been boeing was trying to leave Every, everybody was falling out of seattle there was the big sign in the 70s that said with the last person outside of leaving seattle turn the lights off it was, it was just like Seattle was going nowhere. It was a bad fucking place to, to, to build. And then the tech boom, Microsoft, uh, the B Boeing picked up and got more orders. Uh, the Amazon came through. We had all these opportunities growing, and our city went from desolation to, like they said, one of the richest cities in America. Uh, we, we had a, a music art scene that was huge in the 90s, grunge and everything. Everything that built couldn't compare I mean, to this. Another thing here is like because there's so much fucking water surrounding everything, there's there's not a lot of room to build. I mean, all you can really do is build up or down now. Or so, outwards, right? Well, outwards, you know, we have to go out of the water and then we build these bridges that we put tolls on to keep the poor people no, out the of other Bellevue. Way. The other way is just more water. Like there, there's there's water. There's a big bay with a peninsula, and across the peninsula to get to Bremerton, which is across the peninsula, is a thirty minute, forty five minute ferry We're ride. We're surrounded by water here too, because we got Lake Sammamish and uh, yeah. Lake Washington yeah. on both sides of us. Like so, it's it's really to get from the the Seattle center outward. There's there's not too many so, options. So land and and real estate and everything is just really expensive. And the Seattle proper There's a low supply of it in the city. We're dealing with all the Amazon people needing to get to the Amazon campus. Amazon campus is built in South Lake Union. Before Amazon blew up, South Lake Union was not a very great area. They uh, Microsoft has their own bus service for their employees. I see these big ass yeah, buses that. that are there to just yeah. bus Amazon employees. Holy shit! They're creating their own shipping system. Enjoy like they're buying up planes and trucks and shit. They Thank have their you, own. Groucho. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to be their own country soon enough. I think I, they were trying to buy UPS not too long ago or something like that. We have a story about, about Amazon things. later, but let's uh, we'll talk about it on, on a bigger this. stage, the country. Hey, you know, raising more money via taxes has it just hasn't worked. Uh, our debt goes up, we get less done, and you just create big bureaucracies oh. that actually seem to work, have right. become more inefficient. Uh, when it comes to taxing individuals, I can agree with them, but Amazon can afford to pay higher taxes. They definitely well, can. Probably use tax reform, but uh, yeah, a lot of these big companies don't really pay a whole lot of taxes because so, they they too many legal loopholes. Amazon can afford to pay higher taxes, but they can also afford to start pulling out some of what they're giving to the 
the economy here. They like they could they stop building the building as a as a, a, a tactic to to. That is true. This. Yeah, they had like a building that they were starting to build, and, and they, they just, just stopped building it. it because of this tax. They said, "Well, you you, so, you want us to leave? We'll go." Then yeah. they well, whipped out their dick and, and started on the work. table. And this is a perfect example of all politics starts locally. They should have waited until after they point, finished the building. And to your point, these are two these these com- <laughs> meaning that members of these companies have an opportunity to tell everyone in the country that this is not the way to go. But you know, especially in this case, when you had an independent study show that the percentage, the statistical correlation to homelessness was in, was up with rent increases, excuse me. Uh, it, it wasn't opioid abuse or anything like that, but with 80% median income in a city with less than a million people, we have to ask the question, where is the money going? And that's something I have not heard in this entire debate yet. It's extremely important. Hookers and cocaine. Because there needs to be accountability. But this is what happens when you have cities that are run by Democrats without accountability. You know, of course, uh, DeRoy, uh, Seattle uh, has the worst homelessness crisis, uh, maybe rivaling only L.A. Uh, and, you know, Amazon Katrina brought that up, but it's the rents. But it's also a city. In most places, but they get subsidized by cheap postal rates funded by the government. Oh, and Pat, was her dad Dartley Lang? <laughs> I think I think that uh, Amazon also uh, sub, like the subsidization they get through the post office also keeps the post office in business regularly. Like with the email and stuff, it, it kind of. I think that's a mistake too. You think you think it is a mistake to subsidize the the post office? I think we need to get rid of the post office. Okay. I don't agree. Well, they're for sure making them work overtime. Like you can get your shit delivered on Sunday now and everything. I mean, that's been that way for a while. It's just but... a fucking tradition at this point. It serves no no practical purpose. Well, some people need that still. Like we're still in a world where old people mail their bills in and shit. <laughs> they can use Amazon. Or they can yeah. They can use Amazon. They can use FedEx or UPS or any of the other private services. But Amazon and UPS. Out. They're a specialized infrastructure. This is still the post office. The way it's working. Still going door to door, picking up mail and dropping off mail, and for some old people, that's that's yeah, the best any, they can do. Anything under a pound, UPS is out of the question. It's USPS all the way. I'm just saying they could easily handle that. <laughs> well, they, they could handle that, right? But this is already they in could, order, but it wouldn't and, be cost effective and, for the customer. I would love to keep the post office if it wasn't run by incompetent people <laughs> and and. and well, it's a just, government job, right? Like that's that's yeah, there's always gonna be that level of incompetence. Awful. Like it's a great idea, but it's a piece of shit. But, but this they is the, suck this, and everybody hates them, but they're cheap yeah. though. This is the big story here: is that sooner than later, the people that actually do rely on the post office are going to be phased out. So it's not a good business for UPS to pick up or or FedEx that's, to pick up. That's true. Because it's just going just to be wait gone. For it to eventually fade away. It, it will fade away, but right now we still have people that rely on it. And before long, people will have to make the move. And most people will have already made the move because naturally young people just get that door-to-door mail service anyways. You know, they, they pick up my packages type of thing. Yeah. Good point. This is the last days of the post office, just like we have the last days of uh, girls that don't put out on the first date. Since we're talking about (laughs) Amazon, I'm just going to play the Amazon story uh, that I have here. Now, Amazon, just when you thought Amazon would deliver anything... Now they're this this year they're gonna uh, they're gonna sell and deliver Christmas trees. Oh, so there's literally I mean that's the one thing you would think you'd have to leave your house to go buy. Why though? Yeah, and I'm I'm not talking about fake ones. I'm talking about real yeah. fucking trees. Well, this is Why a great not? idea. Surprised it took them this long to come up with it. The uh, actual stores th- that's another thing that are that's gonna f- be phased out eventually. When I was a little kid, we used to go to a store called Chubbies and Tubbies because they would have Christmas trees. Like, oh, bush. I thought that's where you bought your clothes. You're, fucking <laughs> You're a real dickhead. You know that, right? Set that one right? You're a real dickhead. Zing! When I was in high school, somebody stole my backpack and then left it at Chubbies and Tubbies as like a joke. So Chubbies and Tubbies <laughs> called me and was like, "Oh, uh, is this William Berry? We have your backpack here." And I, had to, I had to go into Chubby and Tubbies like, "Here's my backpack." They probably do that to all the fat kids, but um, they, they had the, like the, the sad trees. They couldn't sell on the regular lots. They'd sell there for like five bucks. So we'd always go like get the these. Charlie Brown tree. Yeah, we'd always get our Charlie Brown tree from Chubby and Tubbies. It was it was what we did. They <laughs> well, don't have that can anymore. Order one like that from Amazon if you want. I bet you they're going to have top quality trees at Amazon. They're Amazon. Right. They'll be more expensive. selling what real Christmas like trees this year. Oh, well, last year it sold trees under three feet tall, but this year it's selling real trees up to seven feet. Prime members can get them in two days. So what will that do to Michigan's Christmas tree farms? We sent Jason Colthorpe to find out. 
I know, Thinking but are about they out Am- there protesting? Amazon shipping Congress real to, uh, Christmas trees raises all make it illegal to mail Christmas trees. I doubt sorts it. Sorts of questions, including how do you send it back if you're not happy with it? But maybe the biggest question is what is that going to do to Christmas real Christmas? If you're Christmas- not happy with it, you've got bigger problems. I mean, what if it's like damaged Three or something? Farms like or, this you know. one here in Michigan. Turn it around. Just put that side of it up against the wall. <laughs> like every person. I, th- I think you call and get a new one, right? Frank Genovese and his wife Kathy sure. have owned the candy cane Christmas tree farm for 42 years. We were named by the Wall Street Journal as having Victorian style trees. Oh. In that time, they've had to adapt oh, to wow, many changes in the Christmas tree. I, I could not look at a fucking tree and be like, ooh, this is a Victorian style Christmas tree. So I think as far as tradition, sad face. <laughs> As far as Christmas trees goes, a lot of people like to go get their Christmas tree with their family, go get a fucking cup mm-hmm. of cocoa, cut it down themselves yeah, or whatever. It's, it's 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 that's not going to change. But for the family that hates going to fucking Safeway parking lot and, and picking up a fucking tree from the the weird yeah. Armenian guy that always bumps up the price cuz you become it'll become a boutique industry. Free yeah. business. And I learned that from the Europeans. Frank and Kathy have had a couple of days to think about the Amazon news, and they think it's going to work out well for everyone. To give credit to Amazon, wow. you have to go through a lot of trouble to come to a farm like this. Me. It's best to, that you can buy a real Christmas tree. Because he's probably selling them to Amazon. From the, you know, <laughs> yeah, there's no Amazon tree farm. They got to get them from somewhere. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. doubt they run out into the woods and cut them down themselves, you yeah. know. So, yeah, I mean, if this helps them sell their trees more easily... Because yeah. cause what Amazon yeah. doesn't actually manufacture anything, right? Well, they do. I think they might. I, I know they, they just do. warehouse and ship things from. They do have their they basic have lines. Got, like, their batteries they have a Kindle them. and stuff like Amazon that. Amazon Basics, though, is like their line yeah, of essentials. Yeah. They have Amazon Essentials and stuff. I don't. They, they well, might outsource them. That shit, though. Yeah, they might outsource them. They might not have a, a, a factory. In but. Seattle, we have these Amazon stores where you can just walk in and grab something and walk out with it, and it charges your Amazon account. I think account. we just have one right now. It's Is a there a store. That's really? Cool. We should we should go there one day and film All a little, little bonus there. bucket thing. United States from another farm producer, and I'm overjoyed with the fact that it doesn't come from overseas. The customer's going to have to like what they get because I don't think they can be shipped oh, back. And there probably isn't enough time to ship them back. Michigan is the nation's third largest Christmas tree producer, so it's definitely a concern as to how this will affect local farms. But Frank thinks they can coexist because he and his fellow farmers aren't selling convenience. They're selling the experience. It's great oh. for family, like experience this together. And I think family grows closer together. That's really what I sell. The tree is almost secondary sells, to families being he together. He sells relationships. Yeah. Please buy my product. He sells those moments. Those moments in time. People yeah. wait a lifetime. Yeah, you really can't replicate the experience of being out on a Christmas tree farm like through the mail, can you? Another big question. <laughs> Sounds like he's really against it. it. Christmas tree cutter. Where is Amazon going to get the trees that they're going to be shipping? The Genovese's aren't sure, but they have the feeling that they'll probably come from a wholesale farm and not farms like this one. Of they course. Clone them of course they're going to do that. They, they, they're they going to get it from wherever they get the best price. They're not going to buy it from mom and pop. They're going to buy it from, you know, something that mass produces the trees. That's why we need tariffs. <laughs> <laughs> In Oxford tonight, Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. That mm. experience is a big part of it what for me. Face? I enjoy taking pictures with my family exactly. when we take them out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. whatever. I look at buying a Christmas tree like I'm picking out a piece of art. I'm not letting sure. somebody else pick mine. <laughs> so well, we'll see how it goes. Else. I don't know. Yeah, well, some people don't have the free time. And if they don't get a Christmas tree, their kids feel like they're fucking popular. If uh, <laughs> Some people just don't give a shit about Christmas altogether. Yeah, I mean, like... When I was a kid, I loved Christmas because I got, oh, I'll, okay, I'll be getting that in a second, that 9-11. Uh, you know, I loved Christmas as a kid because I got a lot of shit, but even though I liked it, uh, if my dad would have asked me if I want to go out in the freezing cold to a fucking tree farm and walk around for like 30 minutes looking for a fucking tree and then, you know, have to carry it and lug it back to the house, uh, I yeah. would have said no. They have like reindeer rides. My dad rides always pulled the, the, let's go cut a Christmas tree, and then we cut a cord of fucking firewood, and then a Christmas tree. Dick. I can't believe you fell for that. <laughs> as, as if I had a choice. <laughs> yeah. We would just cut firewood. We wouldn't have the option for a tree. We would always get our Christmas tree, like, I think we got a Christmas tree one year the day after Christmas, because my dad felt bad. 
we had we had real trees for like the first few years uh like you know like as far back as i can remember you know and then my parents were like fuck this and we had a fake tree the fake tree's like, not bad yeah sure yeah, it's not as messy. Big. It doesn't drop needles everywhere and shit. No, no, we had a real tree every goddamn year. Yeah. Oh. Some years we didn't even have presents. You know, it was hard out here for little Bill Fridge. Oh. Well, at least trees are free if you uh, drive far enough out there. Yeah. My, my dad told me Santa Claus wasn't real when I was like four or five. And then, like, my family got on his ship, like, my grandmama and everybody, like, how dare you do that to those kids? And then he went and uh, told us Santa Claus was real, like, three years later and had Santa Claus show up at the house. And we're like, that's so weird. Like, you already fucking told us, my dude. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I thanks, can take it back. Forgot. Th thanks for the Silver Hawks action figures, but. <laughs> oh, dude, I had a bunch of those fucking yeah, things. Those, those are sweet. I was like, fuck it. I'll yeah, Thundercats in space yeah. is basically what Silver Hawks was. They had the Tex guy that had the, I think his name was. Tex clap doodle or something? No. Tex clap at saddle? No, no, no. His name wasn't Tex. Texas clap saddle um, wasn't. His but name? he had like the guitar that yeah. he played. And then there was uh there was copper the copper kid. The little fucking neutrino looking thing. He kind of looked like a mime. Yeah. We're back to mimes again. <gasps> anyway, uh North and South Korea, I guess, I, I guess they're going to meet up again, the leaders of North and South so Korea. We're just watching President Moon oh, as he departed for North Korea as he heads to a very important, crucial meeting between the North and the South amid ongoing discussions about the relationship between the two as they try to salvage nuclear negotiations. Did, if successful, did Trump take credit for it yet? <laughs> you know, I, I think I, I, Trump takes credit for this shit, but I think the Olympics had more to do with it than anything else. I think... Uh, a lot of the people, uh, a lot of high-ranking people from North Korea went down to South Korea for the Olympics and saw, like, everything was cool there, and they met with the president of North Korea. Have a drink on me, it'll make you feel better. Thank you, Josh. Okay, I'll have Take it. Take my money, you sweet boys. Thank you. <laughs> wow. So sweet. Um, so sweet. But yeah, nice that, I, because... A a lot of the changes started happening not too long after the Olympics ended. And I think that had, you know, cause they had to work together uh, to have that uh, joint hockey team that they had and that kind of shit. And it was on their own land. Like it was really close to North Korea. It was like not too far South of the border. So I think that has, I, I think that helped Trump to be able to make ne these negotiations that he made with Kim Jong-un. Yeah. But I think the diplomacy started with the Olympics because, you know, the Olympics is kind of like a big diplomatic event that focused around sports. Do you think Trump calling him Rocket Man helped at all? No. I don't think he cared. That, that's not a very good insult, Rocket honestly. Man. That sounds cool. It's pretty weird. This meeting could lead to another historic sit down between President Trump and Kim Jong un, and possibly, at least one person is arguing, a Nobel Peace Prize could be in the works wow. for both men if indeed they can pull off this right. huge undertaking. You know, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think beautiful. we should be giving a, uh, someone who's undoubtedly killed tons of his own people the Nobel Peace Prize just because he oh, changed. They're talking about giving Kim Jong-un a Nobel Peace Prize. Both of Trump a Nobel Peace Prize. No, 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 no. no. Kim Jong-un and then Nakamura. <laughs> okay. Chopper, I don't know the guy's name. Yeah, um, I don't think... You only yeah. you only get the Nobel Peace Prize if you're if, if you're the first black president. Well, to adopt a lot of orphans to make up. Isn't for that. the Nobel Peace Prize named after the guy that invented dynamite? Anyways, uh, I don't know what the and Nobel prizes are named shot. after, but there's Nobel prizes for. I thought several Nobel different... invented dynamite. I don't so. know, dude. Well, Doctor I mean, Francis Nobel. That's that's worth a prize. Yeah. So you if know he's, what. Dynamite they, killed a lot of people. They did something similar to this a long time ago. They did it with the Prime Minister of Israel and Yasser Arafat. They gave them both the Nobel Peace Prize. I don't see a lot of peace going on between Israel and Palestine even till this day. And yeah. and it, I think they were being pretty diplomatic back then, but giving Yasser Arafat the Nobel Peace Prize is kind of fucked up. Nobel Peace Prize kind of became like but the participation you, trophy of peace. But you know what else they use dynamite for, Billy? To, m to mine precious metals in order to make life-saving medical devices and, you know, jaws of life, stuff like that. Yeah. Ladders for firemen. 
Yeah. yeah that's, computers. That's, that's good, I suppose. But you know what North Korea does? <laughs> they don't. Uh, Kim Jong Un doesn't starvation shit. camps. He doesn't do shit. I bet you the math will work out to where dynamite has probably saved more lives than it's taken. Okay. Ambassador Maybe. Karen Pierce is the United Kingdom's Karen. permanent representative to the United Nations. What is this? She served woman. as Security Council president last month. Now the United Live from New York City, crazy cat lady. <laughs> is this Melissa McCarthy playing month. a character? Ambassador, good to see you. Thank you. Um, that is a beautiful that was and powerful woman, you guys. Uh, Melissa McCarthy playing a character is the same fucking character she's played in every fucking thing she's ever been in. She always knows. Her, uh, Henry Kazianis, no, who's a North Korean expert, who said that if it does happen, that possibility does exist for a Nobel Prize. So we will see. Talk to me about the importance of this meeting that is about to get underway. Well, the meeting we're just talking about is the South Korean president going to her, talk to the North voice. Koreans. And that's important for family reasons. It's important for confidence building reasons. But it also provides a good context for President Trump's efforts. The president's made a generous and genuine effort uh, to try and get talks with the Korean regime underway. It's important that Kim sat down with the president. Uh, it's important that they talked. But what we oh, really no. need, what the president has said, is concrete steps. And she said something get... positive about the president, you guys. Burn her. She I mean, she's obviously a Nazi. This is on Fox News, so you're more likely yeah. to see that here. But anyway. she is the the the, the direct uh, reporter from Britain to the UN. So like, this isn't like she's some sort of pundit what? picked out by Fox. Sure, whatever. Literally Hitler. But I guess I guess if you want somebody from your country to represent the UN, you want somebody who's positive with America. I, I don't think Trump Trump isn't. Uh, I mean, I don't think Trump is like Hitler. You know. Yeah, because Hitler I, was a very smart man. So <laughs> well, I mean, Stalin built a wall. Oh. Yeah. There we go. Ooh. Yeah. Wow, this is a piece of shit. Those concrete steps towards dismantling North Korea's nuclear weapons. We need to help the president keep up the pressure. That includes sanctions. That includes in the Security Council. Well, we know that Secretary of State Pompeo was expected to sit down for another meeting with Kim Jong-un's representatives. And at the last mm -hmm. minute, the president said, no, don't go. I'm not happy with where we are. What impact do you think that had on all of this? Uh, I think it was a tactical move by the president and Secretary Pompeo, uh, but I think it was right to show the North Korean regime uh, that they need to be serious. On their part, they need to be serious and come to the table, not just with words, but with concrete steps. And I think perhaps the president wasn't confident uh, that that would be the case, so he wanted to keep up the pressure. So, as we said, the United States is taking over the presidency. It's a rotating position at the United Nations. Um, Nikki Haley speaking out oh. very forcefully today against Russia oh. and what she sees as their lack of cooperation in terms of upholding the sanctions against North Korea. Here she is earlier. Russian corruption is like a virus. It is impeding our ability to achieve complete denuclearization in North Korea. Now it is really? spread to the sanctions reporting process. Didn't she used to be the governor of like North Carolina or something like that? Nikki Haley. Really. Let's see. Yeah, she's been around in the news these last few days. Yeah, I think I think she was a governor. She was Yeah, she was the governor of South Carolina. <laughs> No one is trying to undermine the independence of the experts. The United States uh, are becoming increasingly aggressive in trying to subjugate the Security Council. Deny, distract, and lie. We have heard this same song many times before. Lying, cheating, and rogue behavior has become the new norm of the Russian culture. She's taking a very left, tough line against right. Russia. Yeah. Someone doesn't like Russia. Yeah. Scary. She was appointed by Trump though. You know? Who is also a liar? I don't I mean No. <laughs> no. He doesn't lie. <laughs> come come now. <laughs> yeah. He's not a liar. Trump says everything one hundred percent factually. <laughs> Uh, at the I, UN, do you agree with her? Uh, yes. The creator of the prestigious Trump University never lies. <laughs> How could he possibly? It's basically Yale, only uh, it its only campus is a strip mall. Without that weird freaky skull and bones shit. I think it's important to be tough on Russia because we need full implementation of the sanctions against North Korea so that they feel the pressure we were just talking about. And so that the steps they take towards dismantling the weapons are real and they let inspectors in 
to check all that. Are we going to get anywhere with Russia and China on this? Well, China has been helpful so far. Uh, we need to bring the Russians to agree with us and to keep the unity in the Security Council that's got us to this stage so far. She moves her head a lot. Thank you very much. <laughs> Is she real? Or she's so like good. a bobblehead. I would not put another quarter in that one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a quarter ounce. Let's get high and bang, mama. <laughs> Jesus Christ. When all of a sudden Russians seem to change in the last couple of years, mysteriously. They they went uh, they underwent this crazy hyper cultural shift as of about ah. 2016. Oh shit. Huh. I gotta do another one of these. Yeah, I mean, when I was a I mean, kid changed. when I was a kid, like the Russians were the villains in like every fucking movie and right. shit. You know, and it was like Russians want to destroy us, our very way of life. They hate us because of our freedom. They want to launch nukes at us. Yeah. You know, and you go over and ask Russians, and they're like, "Wait, what? No, we love America. What are you talking about? We love jeans. <laughs> we love your jeans. We and love your movies Levi's. and everything else. Levi's number one. Yeah. If there's one thing I learned about communists, is they love a nice pair of jeans. It's the working party, and you can really it work in a pair of Levi's dungarees. That's right. The official jeans of the communist regime. The drunken peasant socialist party. Someone said lying and uh, hypothesis said lying and cheating sounds like the Guerreros, the oh. ones, the ones actually calling shots. The Guerreros? Yeah, uh, yeah I don't know. Damn. If the Guerreros were around today, I bet you there would be a a wall match in WWE. They would have had Eddie versus like uh, somebody in a wall match. A communism will win. You versus Wallace in a wall match. I fucking hate Wallace. I'd tear him down. I would. I would tell Gorbachev to take Wallace fucking down. What else we got? Uh, Someone in your chat said communism will win. Right. That was Fidel Castro, so of course. Yeah. <laughs> of course he thinks that. Don't even try to change his mind. Come on. I'm uh, not. I'm just asking when. When it wins. Yeah, communism is we playing the long game. We just haven't done it right yet. Yeah, oh, that's right, right, right. That's like when we just I need asked, to keep trying. That's why that's like when I asked Trump supporters uh if they're disappointed that the wall isn't going to happen. And they're like, he's still got time. He's still got time. He's got all kinds of time to build well, a wall. he's going to have another four years. I mean, that's not enough time. Let's be realistic. Even if they started building it today, from now, and, and, and Trump wins another term. That's you know not... What? I'll say this about the wall, though. It's a kind of a dumb idea, but it's the fact totally that he's trying idea. to do immigration reform... Well, is at least commendable. Okay, well, don't waste it building a wall that'll be ineffective and extremely expensive. And I, it's literally like just shy of 2,000 miles long. It would have to be that long. And part of it goes through like some of the shittiest terrain you would, yeah, could ever want to build a wall over. So, it, and, and it'd be pointless because the, the terrain yeah. itself in those areas are a, is a, a wall. I don't plan, think it's going to be a solid wall yeah, from one end to the other. But that's how he it was pitched never planned. it. Oh, he pitched it as a wall. But one the, big BT fucking w. wall. Aiden English is married. Yeah. Oh my Guerrero's God, I'm going to die. That's true. No, I'm not. I'm fine. No, Aiden I, English I, is married to Eddie he, Guerrero's daughter. Trump is, is definitely hyperbolic, to say the least. I just think that, you know, all this talk about Russia and North Korea makes me think whether I should go to Korean barbecue or for borscht tonight. Borscht. Why you not both? borscht? <laughs> oh, because I already had most of my carbs or my calories at Chipotle today. DOJ. a little bit of both. DOJ on compressed timeline to declassify Russia probe documents. Well, thank you, Sandra. Good morning. There is no official timeline for the release of the documents, though a source familiar with the declassification told Fox News they expect the surveillance warrant for Trump campaign aide Carter Page first, as well as the FBI interviews with Justice Department official Bruce Orr. The source said the Justice Department is on a compressed timeline, and they added the records could come in days, not weeks. Bruce Orr matters to the Russia case because of his connection to the Trump dossier. You don't Those know. Documents must be on a slow boat from China. Right. I thought they were coming out today. Nobody wants this to end soon, by the way. Like, literally <laughs> nobody, because the news has something to cover, so they don't want it to end. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, 
the it, and and the people doing the investigation that want to nail Trump, they want they want like the juicy shit to hit like during an election to like really throw his game off. At oh, least you, you think they're si you think they're sitting on it? I think I would think so. If it's not <laughs> well, if if it's not enough to I mean, like maybe if it's not but... enough to convict him, if it was enough to convict him for something and, and impeach him and all that stuff, they would probably bring it out sooner rather than later. Well, not worried. But if it's just obviously, of course he's not. Well, I mean, you know what? He uh he's 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 good at pretending like he doesn't care, but deep down his well, ego he does right. have a big even, ego. even if he was, I do just you think he the fact it? that he no. ordered it means I think if he thought that there was even the possibility that there's anything in there that could really hurt him, I don't think he'd be ordering the, the guest. No, he's only ordering the pages ten through seventeen and yeah. like twenty one through thirty four. What about one through <laughs> nine and eleven through fucking uh, whatever? It's it like to me like he just wants this shit over with. So he these are the pages on... that don't implicate me. Release those ones. I order yeah. you release those ones. After the former British spy behind the dossier was fired by the FBI in November 2016, documents show that the spy Christopher Steele maintained <laughs> contact with the FBI and other government officials, as was the opposition Does research firm behind it, fusion GPS. By using no, I think it just has a hairy neck. Why do you look like a grown-ass uh, Chairman Hayden of the House Intelligence Committee spoke with Fox's Laura Ingram last night <laughs> just, just after the White House type. announcement. This is Anakin Skywalker if, if he never made it to the lava pit. The the United States. Nick. Yeah, shave your neck. <laughs> ...who has had to deal with this Russia <laughs> nonsense for this long. This if Russia he orders nonsense. it done, this shouldn't take more than a few days. This morning, President Trump tweeting, quote, what will be disclosed is that there was no basis for these FISA or surveillance warrants. That's the important information. That important information was kept from the court. There's going to be a disproportionate influence of the fake <laughs> dossier. And I wonder who wrote this for Trump. <laughs> he writes it himself. You think he wrote right. this? It but is he capitalized it, so... Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's because he he typed it into Google to make sure it was spelled correctly. <laughs> Just the the way this is written and and worded and spaced out is not a Trump speech or a, not a Trump tweet. This is somebody like his lawyer or, or somebody in his office was like, okay, this is what you got to say for this one. You're gonna comment this, put this in there, and then he was like, hold on though, we're gonna put fake in parentheses before dossier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and don't touch my. Yeah, thing. he he definitely had a hand in it. <laughs> I think as of today, the Russia investigation has spent twenty three million dollars on uh on on the investigation. I think it See, hit twenty three today. Was it twenty three? But didn't they make like fifty seven million dollars? Was it Manafort who uh, gave up his assets? I mean, and it was like that's less than a blockbuster movie budget. So I guess it's not that much money. Oh, but it's so much better. Are you saying we should have Miss Marvel crash into this fucking case? <laughs> I think, yeah, they should definitely really? uh, collude at some point. I think you may have just solved the whole thing. <laughs> we'll be able to make that assessment on their own, Sandra. Catherine, Democrats say mm -hmm. this is an effort to undermine the special yeah. counsel investigation. Well, the response to the declassification has really split along party lines, with the House Intelligence Committee's ranking Democrat Adam Schiff speaking for many in his party, calling the president's move, quote, an abuse of power, not about transparency. It's important to note the release of text messages from FBI senior leadership really is unprecedented. The president calling for Russia-related texts, clean copies without... These are texts that talk shit about him and stuff. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yep. <clears throat> They're Strzok pretty. And his girl Lisa. There. They're pretty self-incriminating. What else? And they're like, no, we're we're totally unbiased. No, it's all about the law. Like, that's yeah, not what your prank. texts sound like. I mean, uh, <laughs> everybody's he, biased, though. I don't think made, I'd be able to. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he, he made some fair. enemies too in in the FBI and shit, and he. Oh, for sure. I mean, like. It looks suspicious when you fire the person investigating you, you know, like that looks bad for sure. Yeah, and that's what he did, and and that guy happened to have you know a lot of a lot of pull with a lot of people, you know. So. But he also could have fired you know fired him because he feels like he can't do the job. That's probably not why because he fired of his bias. Him. I mean, that would be a reason to fire somebody from a high level position. Or did you I mean, even read the book? I mean, he, he was biased, I, but his job is to enforce the law, right? So, right. Uh, 
I mean, everyone's going to have bias. He... He, yeah, doesn't I mean, like he doesn't have to like Trump. He doesn't have to like Trump. Typically, a person in a position like that is going to be smart enough to keep that bias on the down low. Yeah, and it's like, like you keep that shit at home like any other job in the world. I'm not saying I agree with the decision. I'm just saying an argument can be made. But I, I mean, I don't, I don't know all this. This is what's, about all this th shit. This is really why we are where we are fun. now. I mean, like, this is why all this... Sh this was like the beginning, and it's just snowballed from there. So. Well, I mean, if he's guilty of a crime, fuck him. Let him have it. Uh, we'll see, I, I guess. I completely agree. Like, yeah, if there's really some evidence that incriminates him, throw the book at him. But I mean... So far, they're... If, if they're, they're sitting on it, they they must have something really good. They're well, just waiting for just the perfect They're taking down time. a lot of people yeah, around, around him. falling down. Yeah, but they just made, that's usually how it works, Wasn't too. it like $47 million that Manafort forked over uh, and, and uh, seized assets or whatever because of this? The, the, the investigation's already made its money back? through that like everybody's like oh that's a waste of money it's made money man i mean they went after uh what? they went after clinton uh and what like the whitewater shit yeah uh and 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 the impeachment and the shit with, yeah yeah so they went after the clintons a few <laughs> times thinking, trying white, to fuck them up was that whitewater I mean? on uh her her dress <laughs> the that was a totally dress. 23 million dollars and they still haven't produced anything if they're if they're sitting they on have, it they have who knows multiple why people who have that if they had anything they would have used it by now no they, they wouldn't have used it by it now right because the they want to make so. sure that they get the president because if they don't they're fucked and the the fbi is very thorough they they came at oh, martin shkreli him, with seven fucked. with seven indictments and only four of the three or four of the seven stuck it's very rare that you, you, your indictments don't stick when it's the fbi when they come after somebody they make they, they almost always i think they have a 90 percent success rate and so now, when they're doing this, they're gonna they're gonna go against the Trump with every possible thing they can, so they do not lose. Because if they lose against the president, it will cripple the the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. It, will it'll look cripple like. the media too. They've been pushing this for well, you know, and uh, rightly the so, walls are because it means in. they were wrong and they you wasted know, a bunch of time and money. Another thing that speaks volumes is there's some there's a there's talk of a resistance within his own cabinet. And, you know, there's the New York Times op-ed written by someone who was clearly someone who works closely with Trump and who mentioned that there's more people that share their opinion. So, I mean, that's that I, that I like speaks volumes. Trump's quote was that he, uh, he had the best people in his cabinet right huh? at the very beginning. And, and they all know, kept revolving door falling out. A lot of people. Of them. Well, what's he going to say? Oh, people in my cabinet. Meh. A lot of people Maybe are he doesn't big them up. Maybe he just lets them speak for themselves like any fucking normal human being would do. But when you're a braggart, a when you're a boaster, you fucking dig yourself in a little hole. A lot of people are saying it's But Pence. I also think, and someone in your chat said this earlier, Trump derangement syndrome is real. So just because Who? people have don't like him or have strong opinions well, I'm doesn't not deranged. necessarily mean I, that he's a criminal. Well, I, no, I, I don't even think... I don't even know if he's a criminal, but a, a lot of people are saying... Like, a lot of people are saying that... Um, that it's Pence, that it's, it's the bad guy that that was leaking. Huh. Uh, that, oh oh that, yeah, that who stands the most to gain from Trump uh, being removed from office? Young Pence. <laughs> it's it. true. Damn it. Yeah, man. Pence is That's the emperor. A... Trump is uh, Darth Vader. Yep. Follow God's path or face Tesla's wrath, Pence. That's, <laughs> the... That's wow. what they call him. Pence, I don't like Pence. Like I, I would rather have Trump than Pence personally. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if anybody really does. Super religious people. Yeah, don't. I do not yeah. like him. I, I, one of the, my favorite things about Trump is that he really isn't religious at all, and he's turned all these super religious people into like heathens for supporting him. It's fucking. I'm gonna read some. It. Uh, it is, it's crazy. I'm gonna read some Streamlabs, and I forgot. Uh, I think I saw at least a few super chats come in. So. Yeah, boy. Um. <laughs> Pat is Artie Lang's illegitimate kid. Fat Pat? That's what they said. <laughs> Interesting. I don't think so. He does look kind of like a sexy Artie Lang, right? If Artie Lang didn't have the pimp like, jowls? I don't think he looks like Artie Lang. I don't know, dude. Anyway. Uh. Uncle Charlie, $5. Take my money, you sweet boys. Mm. Thank you. Um, What else do we got here? He's my lodestar. <laughs> Joshua DeForge asked how much was left in the bottle. This is how much is left in the bottle. Damn. Um, 
What else do we have here? Oh, Fidel Castro said Trump is a faggot. I'll crawl out of my grave and kick the shit out of him in a YouTube <laughs> MMA match. No. Whoa. No. Uh, Bam's fighting words. Literally. I, I think I've. I think. Joshua DeForge said so much for tradition, sad face. Oh, I think that was the uh, the, the Christmas tree thing. Yep. I think um, we saw that one. There was one that said, uh, this is from Pinoid News. Amazon already gets not just no tax in most places, but they get subsidized by cheap. Or, oh, we already got Post that, office, too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we already read that. Okay. Yeah, most of them we kind of just read because they, they came up. What else we got? Oh, uh, we have, a, we have a, a slightly new segment. Oh. It's, uh, it's called Food for Thought. Oh. With Billy the Fridge. Uh -oh. But I don't have an intro, yeah. so I'll just do an intro right this now. This is Food for Thought with Billy the Fridge. Ow. Quick, Billy, throw up. So this is basically where you guys send me some questions, and I answer them thoughtfully because I am the beacon You're of- You're a thought? Of, I am. I'm the man thought. Yeah, thought. I'm sexy. Uh, question number one. If you guys want to send your questions in, by the way, how can they do that, Ben? Uh, drunken peasants inbox at gmail.com. You can send any type of content. And I'll fix there. your I'll fix your life. Uh, question number one. Dear Billy the Fridge, I'm someone trying to make a name for myself online. I don't care much about the money part of things. I just want to entertain people. What are some tips from someone like yourself on a successful podcast? Uh, you're trying to do a podcast. Here's what you want to do. You want to find a rival podcast and talk hella shit about them. If you can... Are you writing this down, Ryan? Yeah. I got it. Write this down. If you can, get yourself a manatee. Uh, get yourself a manatee or somebody a just to harp on. This is for a dollar. I just wanted to pay you, you puking. I'm sorry for interrupting. I'm Thank sorry. You. Thank you. That was very sweet of you. Go ahead. Sweet boy. I, that wasn't me puking, though. That was CGI. And what you want to do is uh, find yourself a Maddox or a manatee or an enemy that your fans can rally behind. Because once they rally behind a common uh, enemy, they, they feel like they're empowered by just viewing you and watching you. Uh, now, I'm not saying you go pick on somebody and bully them. You're telling people to harass people. Not harass. I'm telling people to find Targeted people. Targeted harassment campaign. Yeah. Find hey, we'll, people. We say, right, we'll take that. We could use the publicity. Yeah. Find no, people who we'll give you rival. the content to work with. It's beautiful. Uh, uh, other options are, you know, do what you love, love what you do. You'll never work a day in your life. La da da da. All that bullshit. You're not. You don't care about the money, right? So just have fun, um, and try and think about the fans listening. Uh, if you can, align yourself with the alt right. Uh, that seems to be really big today. That's where the money's at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get that alt right money because they can't spend it on Marvel oh, movies anymore. Oh yeah, huh? Never mind. You don't care about the money. Shit. Yeah, they get a lot of press do though. <laughs> Uh, question number two, dear Billy the Fridge, I'm trying to start losing weight, but I'm confused as to if I should go straight onto a strict diet or just do more portion control first and ease into things. You I'm, should go gay. They tend to be more healthy. Well, that's because they get AIDS. So they lose a lot of weight from the AIDS. Yeah. As opposed I'm, to going straight. I'm told by some people that it's better to dive right into it so I don't lose motivation entirely, but I don't want to get into the headspace where I feel like I can't go all the way and give up entirely. <sighs> Uh, what you got to do for the first uh, two or three days of your diet, just uh, don't eat anything at all. Only drink water. Fast for two or three days. And then find one of these diets where you give up most things, but you can have something. I chose keto. Some people do like a high-carb diet or whatever. Some people do that bullshit watermelon lemon juice diet. Like find a diet that cuts your calories out and lets you know that you're not going to enjoy food the way you used to because you're going to make your body forget that it's addicted to all the good shit you eat, right? Like I, I cut out sugar. I did keto, low carb. I cut out all the, the bullshit bread and stuff. That was all stuff I was very addicted to. And, and it, would, it would just fill my tummy and make me uh, full. It would, it, would, it would make me overeat while not getting the nutrients I, I desperately needed. So I was starving myself while overfeeding myself. And that's a big problem. Do things that will cut you out of that. Going, going fucking uh, no food at all for a couple days right off the bat. That'll jumpstart your system and make you make you remember what it's like to just have bullshit like broccoli. After you don't eat for two or three days, when you go to have some broccoli, you're gonna be like, "Damn, this is the best damn broccoli I ever had." Do that's that. smart. Do that. 
Question number three. Dear Billy the Fridge, I'm just entering college, but I have no idea what I want to do with my life. I'm not even entirely sure college is right for me, and I don't want to end up doing something, flunk out, and be in debt for nothing. How would you suggest I manage to convince my parents how much... How do you suggest I manage to convince my parents who have never even been to college that it's not a magical place where you get a degree that always makes you a ton of money? Uh, are your parents paying for college here? Uh, if they are go in for a year, fuck all the girls you can that will allow you to do it. Cause that's what college really is about. Anyways, it's about, oh, wait, wait, I got to write this down. Yeah. It's about just humping and drinking and partying. That's what all the rich kids go to college and then they, and then they get, uh, the nepotism that gets them in the right fraternity or whatever. You probably don't have that since your parents didn't go to college. If you're paying for it. Go take some community college classes. Just Why get don't the... you polish off that bottle, Benjamin? <laughs> don't I get two more? Uh, I have no idea. But uh, go, go to community college if you're paying for it and just... You get, get two more? Did I miss one? Do something okay. Do something like... Uh, uh, take a video production class or something or, or a music class. Just, just get in the idea of uh, school beyond school. Learning something that you're interested sort in. Sort of omens. Give just, me school beyond school. Yeah. <laughs> I just, was going to say. Just you know what else you could do? Something else that might help is to uh, hail the hail blue whale. You could try that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gasly's out there. I don't, yeah. I don't yeah. Inhale blue whale? What's that mean? Hail. Hail, hail blue, blue whale? whale. I, I don't get it. Don't, what does that mean? What does it, that mean? It means. What do you mean? What does it mean? Well, literally <laughs> don't know a word of what you're saying right now. The whale, Are you drunk? The, the whale is the light that uh, guides us through life. It's the idea that uh, the final uh, stage of uh, human evolution is to become a ghost. It's a, it's a thing. A ghost? Yeah. yeah, dude. All right, yeah, become a ghost. You need, you need to become entangled, Billy. Become There's a, a ghost. There's a price supremacy in the chat right now. You go check out their channel. That's okay. Cool. It's not gone yet, though. But yeah, if you don't drinking anyways, if you don't know what you want to do, you are gonna go broke. It's learning. It's right? uh, tequila blanco. But if you go do some little bullshit and test it out and see how you do on the little bullshit, you might save yourself some money from going on full on into a career you don't want to be in. You definitely want to find that career. If if tell your parents you're gonna go uh, travel for a fucking a year and see what you want where you want to be in life. Waste your money doing travel. Yeah, that'll put your parents at ease. Tell them you want to travel the world. Well, this is the thing. It's your fucking life. Your parents don't fucking matter. Like, if, if your parents are telling you, you got to go to college. We never went to college. We want something better for you. Guess what's better for me? Discovering what the fuck I'm going to do for the rest of my life because you motherfuckers didn't prepare me for that. You never told me what the fuck to do with my life only to go to college and, and figure it out. That's bullshit. Your parents, your parents should have gave you some sort of fucking dreams and hopes when you were younger so then you could grow up and realize that they were wrong and find out what you were really meant to do. But you don't have no fucking idea. So you mad, bro. You I mad. I am mad. But he speaks the truth. I feel you, Billy. I am mad. You mad. You I mad. I am mad. You got to go out and find out what you want to do. And if you're going to go to college, go there and fuck and drink and do everything do everything to, to fulfill your your inhibitions. Oh, you know what, you know what else you can do? Open up. System, just, sure. just move near a college. Yeah. And pretend like you're going. That no way you get to have questions? all the fun and sell MDMA. From college, but you yeah. don't have to go to class or pay for it. Yeah, get a, get a place near the college campus and sell <laughs> Molly. There you go. You're gonna be the guy that's that everybody good, uh, comes that's to. That's not good advice. You're gonna be the guy that everybody comes to when they want a party. So you're gonna be the fucking hookup. You're gonna get to all the sweet parties. You're gonna be giving people Molly. They're gonna be rubbing up on your fucking tummy and shit. <laughs> it's gonna be dope. It's gonna be yeah, dope. Well, get a set of the, the get advice. a set of turntables. Yeah. Also, yes, become, become a, a drum DJ. a drum and bass DJ. <laughs> Get a fucking cool name like Marshmallow and a, a fucking cap. Go, go everywhere in a bird scooter. Yeah. Was that the last one? That was the last one. Okay. Is it too late to do that, do you think? To what? I mean, if you're like 30. <laughs> no. To ride a bird scooter? This is the thing, right? Yes. Like, here's, here's some life advice. No matter how old you are, you're never too old to do anything other than underage girlfriends. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Anything else, though? Do what you want to do. You can be fifty years old, and if you want to join right. a fucking fraternity, fucking do it. Who's stopping you? So, yeah. did you, you uh, be a fifty-year-old drug dealer who lives near a college? Did town? you see yeah. the? Uh, did you see the drama 
that was going on with Sargon? You know, I'm not quite sure what's the, going on. The, the Medicare Sargon? I was going to ask you. Saga? Like, I didn't know if I was supposed to wear a suit or not. We didn't really talk about it. <laughs> a suit? You probably don't even own a suit, Ryan. Shut up. Oh, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. The Sargon suit thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, I like Sargon, <laughs> but um, I... I just wish uh, you know how uh, you know how Dami Pesos he made like the Soilus Matt show. <laughs> I fucking I love Dami Pesos. So, so they like, were good. they were talking right now. They were talking about him doing like the equivalent the equivalent of that with uh, with Sargon, and I have the best. They were like, "What would we call it? the The best name ever. It should be Carne of Assad." Oh, that's really good. That's right. uh, yeah. There's not a lot. There's not, there's not a lot of meat on that bone, though. You know what I mean? Carne of Assad. Yeah, when Sargon was not, on, Sargon's nowhere near on the level of of Matt. Man, I mean, come on. He's done some cringy stuff, but come on, he's not that bad. No, no. You could have like turned this chat on. Well, you like Matt? Yeah, I like Matt too. Me? Yeah. Oh. I like I, I I like both of them. I you know whatever. I don't jump on the hate train, but I do laugh about it. Like, I flagged... The last time I saw Matt in person, I brought a bunch of flags with me and, like, slapped him <laughs> around, like, with the flags. Like, yeah! yeah. I, don't, I don't know Matt well enough to hate him, but I, I also don't hate Sargon. I know... Yeah, oh, yeah. I, like I know Matt well enough that he is not uh, a person worth hating. That's... Yeah, I'm, I've never been very... I've never been that interested. <laughs> Yeah, he's mundane for a reason. Even when he fucks up on a major level, you're just like, eh, it's Matt. Let him go. He's fucking, he probably wears a gimp mask and lives in a fucking box. In you a know, basement. another cool thing about Sargon is if you like mix up his name, it's Garçon. Garçon. I think that means Garçon. boy in French. Garçon of Kabob. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Garçon. Garçon. And he wears a suit. Yeah. So he, he's Sargon like a French didn't waiter. didn't endorse Garçon. pedophilia. No one fucks like Sargon. No one does like Sargon. He, I missed the kill stream last night, but I bet you he did not, in fact, endorse me. Uh, you know what? It, you know it what? Depends on all the style. these other streams no. always just talk about pedophilia all the time. Like, all the fucking time. I'm not letting it happen here. It's not We're happening. We're done. Okay. Yeah, that was a talk that he had with the There was MOC, actually a counter. And inside that talk, he used the words, it depends on the child. And they pulled it, and they had a good old time with it. Uh, whatever. Oh, okay. Uh, there's um it had to be something like there's that. a counter that counts how much time it's been since the last time they talked about pedophilia on the kumite. Set that clock. <laughs> Somebody said I would say the same thing about Matt if Matt flagged my channels. I would. There's no reason to hate Matt for being a little like like okay. You can hate Matt, right? But it's not like he's this super evil fucking guy. He's just kind of a pathetic dude that couldn't handle criticism. It's actually sad. I would say the same thing. I'd be like, yeah, I'm not going to fucking waste my time yeah. hating Matt because he flagged my channel. It's pathetic. Hopefully he finds something in his life to make him feel whole. He doesn't have to cry on YouTube when he gets 100,000 subscriber plaque because that's the only thing that he felt validated his entire fucking life choice. Okay? Well said. Well said. But I'm more evolved than most of you motherfuckers, so you wouldn't understand. So uh, I'll, I'll keep my dumb fucking mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can say whatever you want. I have a friend. patron to bring on before we start, crazy people. So I'm just gonna set that up really quick. Boom, it won't take boom. that long. Yeah. So what do you guys uh, want to talk about in the in, in the in the remaining moments before we get our guest on? This is our time to talk. The Insomnist boys speak. Oh shit! Now you gonna put us on the spot? Hell yeah! Wait, what do you want to talk about? It was about insomnia. What, what's what's coming up? What, 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 tell everybody at home watching right now. Uh, all the good. Like, like what do we do? Let's just just tell them what's exciting coming up. Oh, we just went black. Yeah, yeah. I'm screen. I'm working on bringing this uh, other person. I in. feel bad we, for you guys. Uh, what we try to do is uh, we try to cover shit. Lot. We we're, a lot of times we're actually the first ones, kind of in our little circle, to cover stuff. Um. It's kind of a timing thing, though, you know, since we do our show on Wednesday and Saturday, sometimes we just get lucky, but we do try to jump on shit, and we try to cover things that don't necessarily get a lot of press, but we think are important, yeah. and we that do spend a lot of time I, uh, criticizing the mainstream media. 
We we make fun of reporters and news outlets. I think that uh, Facebook would probably call us a uh, targeted misinformation campaign. <laughs> yeah. um, who's uh, your, it, it's, uh, it's all right, though. Who's your number one public enemy reporter that, that you call out the most? Uh, um, maybe maybe Cenk. Cenk Uger, <sighs> probably Hassan Piker. We, yeah, we spent some time talking to him at VidCon in person. Yeah, he was pretty cool. Yeah. It was interesting conversation, but yeah, yeah we've been watching, watching a lot of See how seamless already. that was. Just what? being able to bring dude in, <laughs> it would be so much easier if Skype didn't move the windows around every time someone yeah. entered or left the call. Pinche but, Skype, you know, Skype's fun. That yeah. was pretty smooth. Yeah, I didn't want to interrupt the conversation anyway because you were going off on Jenk uh, Uger too, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually there? had something for billy uh -huh. uh, i was going to have to drop down my patronage a little bit uh next month but thanks to your words i'll i'll be on next month hell there you yeah. go man wow hell yeah there you go and Blessed. also ben they uh they did have fighter jets in the air on 9 11 they, they but did. it's the diff it's the difference between a passenger jet and a cessna so and they didn't really know that the whole thing was happening all together, so they were confused on what to shoot down, and you can't just shoot down a random aircraft that's not communicating with you because the hijackers just gonna be like fuck you. I'm dying anyway. If Why you am I gonna shoot, talk to a fighter pilot? If you Call shoot down, night. if you shoot down the plane like when it's over the city, will the debris of it shooting down do? Uh, oh fuck yeah! Yeah, it do some crazy fucking damage itself, right? Oh, yeah, it'll definitely. just rain down. I mean, yeah, it's just like firing a shotgun down engine mostly. Mm -hmm. I mean, when when the plane blows up, it's not going to, like, disintegrate. It's just going to fall into a, however many pieces it feels like. Yeah. It's too bad. But, anyway, what's going on, guys? All right. Let's just hang him about to watch some crazy yeah. people. <laughs> Rest in peace, Sky King. Did you guys get a copyright huh? thing for... Yeah. Did you guys get a copyright thing since they brought the X-Files back? Uh, no, no, because it's, it's not the same song. Yeah, this is, this is the This is like song. a different this version. This is different. You yeah. changed it. Yeah. Boom, boom. It was yeah, the was... actual X-Files song. Yeah, it was. was. It was at one point. Uh, that sounded weird. But whatever, let's get into it. <laughs> <laughs> let's get into the crazy. <laughs> Who do we have now? On your intro. Who do we have now? Uh, oh, this is a rage phone call from Von Helton. Oh, no. Von Helton. Oh, shit. They, Von Helton has so many videos and shit out there. He's 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 very interesting. He's very documented. It's weird. <laughs> I'm, not going to jail. Call, James. I'm not going to jail. I'm not going to jail. I'm not losing my kids. I'm not getting in trouble at all. In fact, my mom is the one that's getting in trouble, not me. Okay. Uh, we will be going My mom's getting in trouble, not me. <laughs> <laughs> a sixty-year-old hey, right? man. They go right under buses. He's going nanny, nanny, boo, boo. I'm not getting in trouble. My mom is. <laughs> my mom. Why is it in my mom. spot? Why the hell is that guy in my spot? <laughs> uh oh. Well, step up your game, bro. Oh shit. I don't know. Was oh, I supposed shit. to have you on instead? Oh shit. I don't know. I don't know. I, I spoke with uh, Animancer today. Oh, oh, okay. And he said, he said I was going to be on because he had, he and I had a back and forth. Yeah, that's and, what I thought. Uh, whatever, and I I lost four days because I had the flu over the weekend, mm. so I lost like ten pounds in four days, and oh. I'm just getting over. Congra it, so. Congratulations on your weight you loss. Look like um, uh, Nick Schwartzen. No, actually, never. <laughs> I, I'll take that as a compliment, I guess. Place where you motherfuckers will never know. Okay, well, even out of state. Well, come in uh, the hangout. The is going to help me get a place out of state, so that you motherfuckers will never ever cost the Kentucky taxpayer thousands of dollars ever again. You know <laughs> the Kentucky tax, dude. This sounds so backwoods. He's so backwoods. But every time How you are going Kentucky CPS, pay taxes? You're costing the Kentucky taxpayer thousands of dollars. Did you know that? Did you know that? Well, what are you thousands that? of dollars? That's, right. Right. That's the whole Kentucky budget. <laughs> hey, how, much, how many dollars do you cost the uh, budget if you're like 180 percent Native American? Is yeah. that like is it more? Does he I, get like I think two he... paychecks for being 180? Yeah, damn. He yeah, has a, he has a home on the res. 
Yeah. Oh my God. His mom God. has a home on the res, right? Like, <laughs> he, he takes her second trailer. But every time you call CPS, you're putting a child at risk. A real child that's in real danger. Okay? And the courts and the courts are flat out tired of it. They're sick and fucking tired of you guys' bullshit. And I'm telling you right now. I'm glad Von Helton's here to tell us that the courts are angry. Yep. You know, Every I, I wouldn't know. report that you have made has been logged with the police. And there will be arrests made. I'm mean, sorry, bro. Fucking shit. What? what the fuck prompted this? Uh, I I think people were concerned about the conditions his children were living in, so they called like the social services people in the area. I, they maybe should be concerned that the kids get their hands on the Elder Scroll and summon a demon or something, because that's pretty bad. I, I don't know. I think yeah. I'd. I'd be more worried about them with Von Helton. <laughs> I've seen like one of his videos and I wouldn't be anywhere near him. Because you say you get off the demon? I'll, What's I, that? <laughs> I would beat off the demon? No, I will be better off with the demon. <laughs> I won't be near him because I would, I don't want to go to Kentucky. You want to beat off the demon. Yeah. Filing a false report is a felony. Filing a false report is a felony, and you will go to jail. No. You will have standard, but you will go to jail. James, you're going to go to jail for neglecting your children. I'm not going anywhere. (laughs) Who was that? Is that Hermione? Hello, Mr. Mr. Von Helton. Please don't summon another wizard. I, I, me and Harry (laughs) can't handle it, Mr. Von Helton. Hagrid, get us out of here. (laughs) I'm glad Hermione's here, knocking some sense into him. That's. I was worried. Bitch, yes, but you motherfuckers sure are. No, Every Jake, listen. Every goddamn one of you bitches say, that have filed a false report have committed down, a felony, Jake. and you are going to jail for real. Jake, because I'm telling you, the board is pissed off. They are Jake. not happy with you assholes at all. And every goddamn one of you that has filed a false report with He's he's got a very high pitched voice. <laughs> Especially when yeah, he's he in does. motorcycle mode where he's rem- revving up. Yeah, I'm I wonder, very high. <laughs> I wonder if he's wearing his cape. <laughs> oh, I, I hope well, that's no, all he's wearing no. doing this. I kind of want to see his exactly nipples. He's exactly like, uh, like a toothless weirdo from the backwoods of Kentucky. Yeah. That's exactly what he I is. Mean, it's, <laughs> with it's it's authentic, with folks. The police has been monitored, it has been logged, and you will go to fucking prison. Well, Jay, well you know, consequences you will never be the I same. Don't know what they're going to do with you guys? But well, if you live in America, I guarantee you, you, you will go to prison. James, but now you people in the UK, I don't know what they're going to do with you guys. James, I don't know if they're going to contact your police over there or what they're going to do. But I will James, tell you this: I talked to the judge. You did not talk to the judge. I talked to the judge. Why didn't you call the police? And the judge has absolutely no intentions of throwing me in jail. He's so mad. God damn. I mean, can you blame him, though? No. Yeah. Nah. I mean, you can't really blame stupid people for not grasping simple concepts like let the trolls troll. Yeah. Because they'll well, stop they trolling if you don't feed into them by calling them. Above trolling, I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'm i struggling to like. Swatted. Of course, but now he's. like not side with Von Helton. But no, because fuck that, because he's trying to reason with the trolls right now. He's trying to tell them what's going to happen to them. Like, like, they don't give a fuck if the police are coming for them. Come and get them. Once the police are there, they'll give a fuck. But he's over here trying to, like, cast his spell on them. Like, you better live in fear of me, Lord Von Helton, and his his magical cape and his, his yeah. Elder Scrolls. Yeah. I got the police coming to you in America. And, and I'm going to have, I'm gonna have uh, the, the, the Snape come and spank you, Hermione. Oh, there's, there's a picture of him in his cape. I'm going to... He he actually has a cape. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, I think oh he thinks he's god. a he thinks he's a real sorcerer. I think he got it on sale from yeah. Amazon when Doctor Strange didn't do as well. In yeah, it's like theaters. a Doctor Strange cape. <laughs> it's legit a Doctor Strange cape. Yeah, he, if uh, it's the kind yeah. that makes him invisible, I don't. <laughs> want Oh my god! <laughs> he should put up. He should put up a protection field around his face and let me just swing. As Look hard at his as house. That beard is. It's uh. The inability to buy a razor. Oh, that was a protection field. <laughs> yeah, that guy's on your team, Pagans. 
Do you think oh, his yeah, encyclopedias are, are, are a full set of encyclopedias? I'm trying to read back there. I, I think some of the it's books It's a full are, set of encyclopedia dramaticas. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of the few people that had to have his he encyclopedia dramatica printed out. Yeah, <laughs> it's a really cluttered house. Look at that room in the, yeah, in the background. Shit. He's got a stack of Mad magazines on top of his bookshelf. I wouldn't. I don't know if I call him <laughs> quite a hoarder, but. Someone needs to tidy oh, up that double wide. Yeah, he's not a yeah. hoarder. He's got a messy house. He's just a man that collects stuff. He's a collector. Those are a spell. That was a bad sign when you see that like eighth inch like wood wallpaper. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, a double yeah. wide. That's a trailer. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, absolutely. Yeah, hey, don't be ragging on trailers. I, I, I wasn't ragging on it. I'm just hey, pointing man. it out. I'm just saying this. This is my first home. This is a messed up trailer, though. This is like, oh yeah, no, I'm not letting mine go to the shit. This like is his that. mom's trailer too. You know, his mom lives in another building. Like, but she owns this trailer right. and gave it to him. Yep. She's like, you can live there, I guess, because you're you're my weird little son that summons sorceries. Yep. And you ain't gonna do shit with your life. It's you nice can't you let got you out me in the oh, real world, so you just move in next to mama. It's nice you made mama some grandkids, Bobby Hill. <laughs> Here in Kentucky. Oh my god. I can't believe that guy has been laid. Holy shit. Oh, it's so easy to get this, laid, especially in Kentucky, I think he's like a polygamist Kentucky, and stuff. Well, he tries to be. I don't know if he ever pulled it off. Oh. But Surely it, there's someone he can overpower. <laughs> it's not even overpower, <laughs> dude. Like, in Kentucky, the options are thin. If a dude has his mom's trailer, he's a catch. <laughs> in Kentucky, he's a catch. It's so sad. Hell, if he even has his mom's eyes. <laughs> it's so accurate. <laughs> He's like, oh, you mean oh, your mama God. got her own trailer and she gave you one too? Hell yeah, I'll marry you, Von Hell in. Yeah, right high class. Hell yeah, I'll have some babies with you. They're gonna have a roof over their head. They might have some uh, wooden wallpaper on Someone the walls. Someone in the chat said he's a Kentucky <laughs> Seven. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> A, a, ouch. a Kentucky is 7 is like a Seattle is zero? 1 or negative 1. A yeah. Seattle sub zero. Jesus. I'm, I'm like a Seattle 4. I'm I'm in Kentucky I'd be a fucking 10, dude. They'd be like, <laughs> Billy, oh. there's actually there's actually a girl in one of my classes who looks exactly like you. Yeah, but she's not me, me though. Out. She's not me though. Like she, no, uh, she ain't got the talent, but yeah, she, I'm telling you, she I, ain't a, I, she ain't I'll a four. A picture and send it to Ben or something. She ain't a four. <laughs> Even in Kentucky, she'd be like a six. She'd be fucking Von Helton eye to eye. But if you were like five feet tall and wore women's clothes, yeah, that would be her. I'm a Tucky ten, dude. How do you know he's not? Uh, bum, bum, yeah. bum. He's not five feet tall though. <laughs> <laughs> fucking lies. I don't know how they got started, nor do I give a fuck. But what I do know is that they will be giving me a place to go, me and the kids, a place to go that You're is out of the state of Kentucky, yeah, where you guys will right. not know I like where I'm at. BBW, you will not yeah. know. Type that wanna suck you dry and then eat some lunch with you, yeah. <coughs> so thick that everybody else in the room is so uncomfortable ass on Houston, Texas. But the face yeah. look just like Claire Huxtable <laughs> also drink. Bitch. <laughs> Claire yeah. Huxtable. Claire what? Huxtable is sexy, dude. I think that was a haiku. <laughs> that was, that was pretty long. nice. Wait, <laughs> that was a not. beautiful haiku. It was a little long. Yeah, Claire Huxtable was was it Rash Felicia Rashad? Was that was that the mom? I'm pretty sure, yeah. She's she's a so right. fine fine woman. She's the type of lady that I would I would drink to. Check this out. This crazy guy uh, claims that John McCain was killed by a military tribunal. He was executed. Uh, yeah, the, the guy that was like 90 years old with brain cancer, he was actually executed. Hold up, though. If you were going to die, die anyways, wouldn't that be cool to get a military execution? It's not. Okay, whatever. But no. I prefer to go out that way rather than wither away in a hospital. When they thing. drop the hammer on these guys, and I believe there will be executions. And we both know that John McCain was executed. We both uh, know. You know, under oh, military oh, tribunal. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I was... To update my records. I'm glad he's speaking uh, to his I, audience of one. We both know. Yeah, look at, look at all the DVDs yeah. behind him. This is like if Von Helton had his shit together. Yeah, basically. <laughs> That's... 
That's he's, pretty sad. He's got his teeth <laughs> and he's stuff. He's got his DVDs together. Does he have a, an award in the background for 9-11? I don't know what it is. is it's it, probably some oh, commemorative. Oh, I think I might be a, <laughs> might be a clock. Does no, he have a 9-11 like participation it, trophy? <laughs> Which is another Probably reason like why like Kavanaugh, or some uh, shit. Judge Kavanaugh, is they're screaming so loud, they're trying to disguise it that it's that it's solid abortion shocking. that they're worried about. That's not what they're worried about. They want a solid five four vote for the military tribunals because if you no- notice the line of questioning for Lindsey Graham uh, the other day, he, he said, "Hey, you know, if someone who's a civilian commits treason, does it fall under civil or military?" And he said, "Military." And that put a shock wave. That put the fear of God in every one of them. That's why they're fighting this guy so hard. It's not Roe versus Wade yet that they're worried about. So it's wait, the military. My, wait, what? I'm I'm wondering. I'm not like I'm not Jag. It's just I'm just wondering where this guy's getting military tribunal from. Is he just pulling it out of his ass? Yeah, because so you don't YouTube conspiracy theory. Yeah, you yeah. don't go before that for. It's not like they put you in a court where everybody judges you and they're in like. You know, full dressed uniform, and then you get sent outside and shot. Well, he's trying it's to like convince us. Von Helton, Von Helton yeah. has said the same thing that John McCain didn't die of cancer; that he was like, yeah. Uh, well, but but his theory wasn't that he was killed. His theory was that they like shipped him to Europe somewhere to like Ukraine or something. Put him, put him back yeah. in a, a that's, internment that's camp. I remember. Prisoner of war camp, POW camp. Uh, this guy's trying to convince us that John McCain was assassinated, or not assassinated, shot uh, military style. Yeah, executed. For his crimes. Executed for his crimes. Okay. But so when he decided to just go off of his medication and then died two days later, they shot him in the face and. Yeah, yeah dude, when, you get, I wanna... when you get executed, you get shot in the, you get shot in the face his... and that bullet goes in spreads out and your head basically just blows out the back so the viewing probably wouldn't have gone over so well yeah. considering he was in the country's capital his I don't high, know, man it just doesn't add up his highly publicized trip. battle with cancer like we, we've heard about this for uh, over a year we've known you know what the, medication he was on because they took him off and he fucking he died instantly yeah <laughs> yeah he well he had brain can he like aggressive brain cancer too we knew this was coming for a while that well, it, still, I mean, it's not like, like like he was just jumping around. He was in a wheelchair most of the time. I think if you take that medication, life. it'll it'll make you like Superman. Yeah, it's like healthy. what's that movie where he like gets his shit together and it, oh, it's like, like limitless. Limitless, limitless yeah. yeah. Hmm. Oh, Maybe it is. Well, it, he's fucking John McCain. He's a senator and a war hero. So you think they're not just gonna give him some super vitamins? Like, yeah, this is kind of the cure for cancer, but you're not president yet. The life extension <laughs> drugs. Love, love. Motherfucker. Making you laugh makes me smile. Aww. I love to see you smile. I ben. think I could go up against Ben in a sp- spin till you spoo. You think you could? I'm pretty sure I could. I, you'd have to give me a, like, next month I could do it. Because I can't do it this month because I'm just getting over a fucking flu. I can't do but it more than once a month, month yeah. anyway. <laughs> yeah. uh, if if you're up for the challenge, I'll do the end of next month. As, boy, you guys right. just start a bum of the month. It's club? gone now. It's totally gone. Every last bit is gone. <laughs> the now. vodka's gone. The vodka's gone. If you guys do 9/11 mode now, Ben will just get punched in the. I'll dick do a I'll do a bong rip now for 9/11s. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be so trashed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> Yeah. If you guys want to save Ben's liver, just d- send uh, send a little more than nine eleven. Send ten dollars, and he'll be like, "Oh, I don't have to drink for your approval." And you are special people that still show me that you love me. It's all wow. you got. Or be like that. Be like that one guy and send twenty seven thirty three. So he has to triple it up. Damn. Damn. I don't know, I don't know what my some, advice. Someone sent me this video. Yeah, I'm I'm done with this guy already. Yeah, he's a fucking bullshit uh, artist. Yeah, I don't know fuck what the fuck this is. And someone sent it to me. It's called the Delray Misfits Halloween Party Part Two. Mm. <laughs> Folks, Whoa. we have a great Halloween party. That's we have a great party. Polly. Polly. She's wasted. Old lady is shit <laughs> I love you, Lord Vader. And Why does everybody ready? look like uh, transgender humans that are that didn't change gender though? They look like they're just 
Like a man that turned to a man and a woman that turned to a woman. Uh, I thought it was a mask. Like, I don't know. No. Yeah, you can see the line on the Holy shit! Oh, 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 what is this? I requested everyone like now Dave to Batista's stay Down Syndrome to the finish because we have two truth, fabulous... That guy's decked out in Michigan shit. He's got uh, a, a he's got a, yeah yes he is <laughs> he's, yeah yeah he's got a University of Michigan like thing around his neck. Contest and then it's Catwoman oh, dude. and the oh, guy from crazy the, characters. One of the in unfortunate things about going to Kent State is we cheer Michigan colors, <laughs> so I don't wear any Kent State. It's shit. it's the same You're thing welcome. with the uh, University of Toledo. They have Michigan colors too. Is that Robbie from Rotten from Lazy Town in the? In the fatigues. We're working on this that, wonderful content. Oh, I thought it was a Mick Jagger. Where, where's that weird dude? Well, he's behind a uh, farty lang over that here. Weird? They're all weird, dude. No, the, the oh, fucking sorry. creature. The you know when oh, Pitmunk's oh, dad oh, looks like the most normal person in the room? Is he trying to be. <laughs> they probably didn't even what know that he? he was there until they reviewed the video. Yeah. Oh, he only God. shows up he's on film. To be Gru or. Or, uh, uh, what's his name? Uncle Fester. Yeah, he's black on Uncle Fester. Days apples. I don't even be, know. Uh, what's his name from Guardians of the Galaxy? This is a Rex. Halloween party, Rex. but I don't know what anybody's fucking costume is. <laughs> like, what is this guy supposed to be? He's fucking wasted. And the second contest is best female and male costume. Wow. <laughs> You all win prizes. I like how they got so the pizza boxes stacked on the wine thing. bottles. Savage. That's a party. Everybody got laid that night. Oh, dude, everybody <laughs> had an origami. Like, they all got together and just started fucking each other's phones. An origami. <laughs> yeah, you know they did. The hangout. So, and then we have dessert, of course. Dessert. Lenny, you got what you in the got bag. Me? Holy shit! That's Who? No Come on, man. What do you say, dessert? That's oh, yeah. disgusting. I hate that. That's George old, the Animal Steel Toe Deal, though. <laughs> old lady is so about to get dicked down by Hood Grimm. <laughs> <laughs> what am I looking- What is going on with this guy? Uh, hey, my, like, my bike, punk. This dude's on steroids. It's this is the His only man. His look so weird, dude. Yeah, what's, what, is he wearing? He's got to be got like a pillow in there or something, right? Lips? That can't yeah. be his actual stomach. Oh, they want this man's, this man's specialty is consensual rape. Rigged. I'm out of here. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not I'm rigging it. We're all going to show Holy rumble, shit. <laughs> yeah, that, the chat keeps pointing it out. Like, this dude is sweating like a yeah, fucking racist. And he's got the look in his yeah, eyes. If he was he here, I would be afraid. Like yeah. American <laughs> he looks like he's going to fuck That's something and then eat it. Even they're talking about his stomach being full of worms. He's a monster. I said Lenny shit. Okay, I'll let mine too. He looks like a woman that's gotten a Not very well thought out. That's what tits look like when you've had a fucking Me too. This the last minute. What do I have in my closet costume party? I'm going to let mine go too. Oh shit, it's a costume party? What the fuck? Anyway, best costume for male and female coming up. So, hang in. Jane's looking fucking All the, uh, <laughs> He looks like wow. a super mutant. I'm going to challenge you right now, uh, <laughs> drunken peasants fans. If you're at home right now and you have other drunken peasants fans in your area... Just do a Halloween party this year. Get and together send us videos and like this. try and beat these people for the most weird fucking costumes possible. This is the weirdest video. Oh, it's this so is weird. A hottie, right? You got a crush on Sharon, I would huh? hit that. Dude, his head is so big that he has to put it on There's the very <laughs> last notch. <laughs> that, and it's hanging little... out for your life, too. It looks like, a, split, struggling, uh, man. It looks like a pit bull split dome on their, on their head <laughs> where it splits down the middle. <laughs> Somebody yeah, save that poor Definitely. Oh my god. Like someone just invited all the crackheads out of the alley to come party. Oh, yeah, you can choke her oh. with her necklace. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I missed it. I missed <laughs> it. I'm getting laid tonight, face. He's getting antsy. <laughs> this is the house on the same plot as uh, the trailer that we just saw. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Holy shit. That's what I wanted. When her hair fell off, I think that might be Cindy Lauper. All this guy's It's not Cindy right Lauper. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy. Oh my god. Party Lang.
<laughs> oh, oh god! About to get laid by Saw that coming chick. coming at you from across the bar. Yeah. Her with her She's choking herself. Let's see your feet. Oh Take off gosh. those heels. Awesome blue toes from my mouth. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh. oh no! Oh. He's gonna suck that thing's feet. I'm down and, with that. And the distended oh. sucker toes. Worm King Kong fellow is gonna make to all of it. Suck those toes. Oh. For film. <laughs> is he gonna <laughs> suck? Oh. Oh, no. oh no! Oh no! Dude, don't do it. Oh my god! <laughs> Can't watch. Holy shit. All right, so Ben, should I play it or not play it? Ben, no. I will only watch out of curiosity. The next man, donation that lust. comes in, they they make the choice. They say yes, Tell play it. No, over. don't play it. Okay. And we're going to sit here and we're going to rally. I'm Look at rally. this Michigan toe sucker. I see you guys think How I'm an exaggerating in Michigan gear. How are you not going to play it? This would never happen in Ohio. His his hat is uh is a Brian Detroit really Tigers hat though. Which doesn't make any. I mean, I guess they're both Michigan, but yeah. Oh my god, I I'm actually getting sick. Not even watching it. Like Chet, the yeah, thought Chet of just it. wants to watch us rich. Yeah. <laughs> if the if I the, would say fuck the chat, but make this if, Michigan if dude the first, suck that toe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm I'm gonna make a point, okay? And if you guys want to rally against this point, go ahead. I'm gonna say let's not watch it because we all know it's gonna be gross, right? We already know that. What There's, if someone okay? If someone sends in a stream live and says don't watch it, then they then then uh, first, it, it could even be just a dollar stream yeah. labs. You guys control Time's the up. outcome. The first person bite the bullet. So what if the person first person says play it? You're gonna play it? Yep. Yes. Oh yep. shit! And I'm gonna say I'm gonna say whoever's out there right now, just put your money where your mouth is. One dollar. Say don't play it. We don't need to see this. You we're, control what we're, happens. We're grown human beings. Wow. We do not need to see this sick stuff. And if He's you guys are sick, draw. you can come in and say, here, suck the toe. Suck the toe. Anybody, anybody disagree with me? See... Does anybody here want to see the toe get sucked? Predictable response from Alicia. I, I do. Um, what if she falls there it is. Her? Play oh, it. Shit. I knew it. Play it. <laughs> oh! Oh, oh my god. Get the scope. Oh my god. Dude, he's, he's, he's not sucking it. He's licking it like it's a vag or something. Oh my god. He's like getting under the shirt. Come between the toes. Help me. Is this a dinner for schmucks? What is this? Oh god, that is. Yeah, I have to go to the restroom. She's all hot and bothered. I have to go to the restroom. Oh my god, she's totally not. She's grossed out. She's all hot and bothered. Jamie, yeah, she, this dirty broad is going to go wash her feet. <laughs> because you? even that so was too gross for her. I want to wash my feet now. This thing's. Oh, Larry David Whoa, shows up. Larry David what a twist. Oh. What a twist. <laughs> is Bernie Sanders? No, that's the dad from Eight Simple Rules. What are you dressed as? <laughs> Grandma? Larry King? As myself. Oh. No, he's a... Yeah, <laughs> Larry King! <laughs> they, they, they call him Larry David. I'm here to tell you to get the fuck out of my house. I don't know who any of people I'm an investment banker, really. <laughs> the name's Bernie. Uh, Bernie Madoff. <laughs> yeah, basically. I'm Bernie Madoff. So I'm here to suck some, some feet. I'm slumming tonight, buddy. I'm slumming tonight. I'm I, I, the wrong house. I heard you slomos were sucking toe. Who wants to lick the old pa? <laughs> <laughs> you got some schmutz on your toe. Let me suck it off. Oi. Ew. Uh, Come in here. Ah! What the fuck? <laughs> it's uh, Rex of the Clown! Uh, this Ron is this, the I life can't. of the party just showed up. Have you ever gotten invited to an orgy before? <laughs> no. Because when you do, it's this. This guy shows up? If you look in the back, you can see in the very back corner here, like where my fingers are pointing, there's people in the background. Yeah. These are like people that got invited to the orgy because they're just sick, kinky people. They're not ugly. They're not nasty. They get off on the fact that these ugly, nasty beings are there. <laughs> there's that girl in the background there in the window looking in. They're like, oh my God, it's going to be so hot when I'm fucking. And this weird <laughs> animal sticks his thing in me. This is an orgy. There is a couple of hot people but they're not the ones doing most of the work. This fucking guy rides in on his motorcycle made of dildos and does most of the work. What is that? You're wearing a 
fucking choker. Mark. What are you, fashionably it's late? It's a pleasure. Yeah, pleasure it's a pleasure you. to meet you. Give me a hug. Oh, <laughs> so wonderful. I hope he didn't drive there. <laughs> Shit. That was hard. <laughs> He's the dealer. <laughs> Every orgy has these people. There. I wonder if that's his real hair. Of all the orgies you've been to, you, this is the most common scenario. Not, not, yeah, not, yeah, not, I'm, I'm not even the ones I haven't been to. This is it. This is orgy lifestyle. I get invited because I look like one of these people. Oh, they do have the box little dead in the background. <laughs> There's a whole handful of bots there that have daddy issues. <laughs> God, he existed. Uh, I forgot that thing lives on this planet. About one second into this video. Ron <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Stripper. Hey, 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 hey. And th that guy. <laughs> what are you? That guy's like armored skeptic, and he has his his June there. He's got his shoe on head next to him. I don't think armored skeptic and shoe on head are into this type of stuff. But there's there's a certain level of kink that goes so. on where regular people. Regular people exist within these irregulars. Those are the two regulars. They probably are the ones that got the other regular people to show up. They're like, oh, yeah, we're going to have an orgy. But they always have the fucking you know this, the fuckable clowns um, at the orgy. This story is... Uh, or uh, this, this channel... It says, a channel dedicated to some of the wacky, witty, jacked, and charismatic characters who train... At 6 a.m. at World Gym in Delray Beach, Florida. Oh, oh God. That's what this is. <laughs> yeah. And this is what this is? That's on plane. Disco biker? Disco biker on plane. What, 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 what 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 this is from the channel. This is from this is from the channel. They actually have a Wait. decent amount of subscribers and everything. I'm sure they do. People are weird. Tattoos like you, babe. Yeah, like <laughs> I'm not buying your uh, your your narrative. You don't think it's an orgy? No. Come on, the dude uh, just sucked an old thing's toe. Okay, that's just Holy that's a precursor. Shit, He's just this? getting things started. Oh, this shit's very long. Shirt. That's this a precursor to origami. Oh, hold up, were they bobbing for nobbins? And did the witch right. come back? Ah! Wow, look oh, how it ends. Ah! Stop fucking doing that, man. Something tells me that guy doesn't look all that much different. Oh, was was where's Speedy? Is Speedy in the chat? Re hurry, hurry. Where's Speedy? Man, politics really took a toll on Glenn Jacobs. No man, <laughs> no man, <All> right. <laughs> no man. I didn't do my homework. I'm going to be a cowboy when I grow up, like my friend Stormy. Stormy. <sighs> where is that? Shave Batista. <laughs> this is it's Rave Batista. <laughs> <laughs> I love this shit. This is great. This this is great. <laughs> we got Speedy and, little and Sleepy. Head. Speedy and Sleepy. <laughs> Speedy. We're the new seven dorks. Snow White. Snow White and the seven dorks. We got Speedy, Sleepy, Corpse Midgey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, we do. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Somebody out there. Finish off the rest of the seven dorks, Snow White and the seven dorks. We need a we need a new a new a new super team for for. You know, it was Peasant's Corpse Lore. Midget's uh, birthday the other day. It was, was it. Oh, really? How do how do you know? Yeah, he, it was his birthday the other day. How do you well, know? Did he have a birthday party? Uh, he posted it on uh, Instagram. I I don't know how old he is. I he has no oh. age. Um, probably Corpse he probably only Corpse Midget is only... timeless. <laughs> He only turns a half a year, you know. So he's 34 and a half this year. <laughs> 34.5? So I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to, because we're already over two hours right now. So instead of playing the timer at the end, we'll just make this video the timer. And we'll talk about the video. So if you guys want to send in Streamlabs, send them in during this video here. And then we'll read them at the end. Uh, but if they're text to speech, we'll read them immediately. Mm -hmm. Hey Ben, uh, there's something I actually uh, from the Discord that I wanted to address. That somebody brought up uh, oh, before okay. we start the video. Okay. Real, uh, real quick. Um, so I originally I started this channel with uh, my buddy to do uh, military information for people who are going to be joining the military, and someone asked me like, what happened to that? Long story short. I was getting into school and buying a house at the same time he was dealing with his kids and his wife 
uh, or his kids and his his wife went to basic training in AIT for a year almost. And he's in Belgium. She came back to the United States. It was a whole shit show, and we laid the entire framework for it, and neither of us had the time to actually create content. Mm. So both of us felt like we talked to each other, and we were both like pretty distraught about not being able to help anybody, and we love to do it in the future. It's just we don't have the time <laughs> to actually create content right now. So unfortunately, we can't provide the videos that you want, but at any time, if you're in the Discord, go ahead and ask me. Uh, Ask me any questions at any time, and I'll get back to you right away. <laughs> Egghead was having a, a meltdown in the chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so someone else, someone else might not have seen Speedy. why we call Egghead Speedy. Because that's the name of his character in this in movie. In this movie, the Egghead's in that his dad produces. All right? Oh, his, shit. That's Egghead? That's, that's Egghead. Egghead. As a yeah. little bub. Oh, my His name God. in the movie is Speedy. Speedy. And we, we watched it on a private show the other night, and Ben watched it on a side show. So, like, a lot of regular viewers might not know this, but Egghead is a movie star. So we made sure to change his name in the Discord chat to Speedy, because that's the name of his character here. He's, he's the friends with Stormy the Cowboy. And his dad plays <laughs> Texas. He te he's plays Stormy. Texas Clapsaddle. <laughs> Texas Clapsaddle. <laughs> and his, his cowboy buddy Stormy. <laughs> it's it's I heard actually you guys, uh, I heard you guys putting up this uh talking about him and you put it up but i was taking a shit so i was like oh man i want to see egghead yeah i didn't realize you put him right in front of that's me. the joy yeah that's the jam but i think i think this movie the egghead was in was actually what pimp monk was dreaming about when he fell asleep in his chair he dreamt this entire movie up and somehow it exists in our world i don't know it's freaking me out I don't know, Egghead said, I hate you. <laughs> 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 we could bring Egghead on and talk to him about it. Oof. Oh, uh, why, though? No. Oh, dude, we had him on the post show. It was a lot of fun. It was fun. <laughs> Egghead's we, a good sport. We just asked him all kinds of fucked up he questions. He is a pretty good sport. Yeah. Like, Say what you want about Egghead. He's a fucking... Like, like, uh, like taking it in the ass kind of questions. Like, how much would you take it in the ass for? The and Like, a lot of weird questions like that. And he wouldn't answer it first, but we broke him down. Yeah. Was, the well, Ryby okay. thing. If you're going to keep asking. It was beautiful. The, beautiful. Like, uh, like asking him about Ryby. He swears... He, he says he never jerked off thinking about Ryby. <laughs> no, he said, he oh, said, I oh, thought of Ryby as my sister. So when I was jerking off to her, it wasn't like I was jerking off to Ryby, but my sister. <laughs> so we would finish faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe he didn't say that. Boner so if he's a big time uh, movie star, how long is it until he uh, me too somebody? Sounds like um, it's already happened. Honestly, he does it to himself. He might have. Yeah. He to himself. <laughs> he sexually harasses himself. He might have got the Texas clap doodle on set. We don't know if he was giving. Nobody. Oh. Nobody wants to admit to be touched by that. So That's this is me first. This video is called <laughs> the largest ghost town in the world. It's this, uh, this whole town here. It's uh, Gorilla One Nine Nine. You're not allowed to go there. Oh wow! If you try and go there, you will be shot dead. I'm at the one what? of the Famagusta viewpoints where you can see the the ghost town, uh, which is invaded by the Turkish army in 1974. He's saying that that is a that town over there that looks like a normal town is a ghost town, but, and if you go in there, you'll be shot. And, uh, the, uh, I I think the place that he's at is on uh, Cyprus, and uh, on Cyprus there is actually an entire city that's been abandoned due to war i think he said it in 19 in the 1970s and it's just been left to uh, go to the elements and nobody's allowed to go into the town because it's still disputed over but so they I have people he's guarding fucking it? retarded so but yeah. i don't know where he is it's it really is a sad fucking... sight sad sight to... it, uh yeah i mean i know he's from england but i don't know where yeah. he is right I'll now i'll just give you a good zoom up of it no one's allowed to, to go there. Famagusta, ghost town in Cyprus. Okay, yeah. He says yep. he's in Cyprus. Yeah. In Egypt? No, Cyprus uh, is in Cyprus Greece. Is Greece. Just below Greece. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. It's part of Greece, right? No. This, uh, it's not? this whole town I don't here. think so. I think... You're not no, to go it's, there. It's, it's its own uh, sovereign Greece country. Huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, not great with geography. I thought a Cypriot was uh, Greek. If you try and go there... You will be shot dead. Wow, that is a that's 
Wow. That's how modern ghost town. Your ghost uh, town, you think like wooden shacks and you know the whole western thing, but that's like what's it's about the uh, what's actually really cool about this town that he's at is um, it's in a book that I read. Uh, it's called The World Without Us, and it's a perfect analog of what would happen if humans just basically disappeared because nature is completely taking over this town because nobody's allowed yeah. in. So any anybody allowed in there can see what would happen if we were gone for a hundred years, a thousand years. I saw until, that. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah. The Discovery well, did a special a on that, right? Charging. Uh, it was the History Channel did a okay. special on it, okay. but that was. Yeah. You can make a ton, a ton of, mo of money as a location, a shooting location for movies and shit. If they'd let yeah, it it's vice. definitely a shooting location. It's time for another <laughs> uh, Vice exclusive. They should send uh, some of their guys down in there. Looks yeah. like uh, <laughs> looks like Cyprus I, got its uh, independence from the United Kingdom in uh, the 1960s, huh. or not in the year 1960 actually, and and then it joined the the EU. It, their Independence Day is October 1st, 1960, and uh, and they joined the EU in 2004. Hmm. And uh, the two major languages are Greek and Turkish. Closest you will ever get. To seeing Famagus the ghost town. Wow. I think my billionaire was a Greek Cypriot. It looks way closer to Turkey than it is to Greece from like looking at it on a map. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it looks Middle Eastern. Yeah, it's, How does a whole city like that become abandoned? It's contested. Well, so th it's, they, people yeah. try to take it over. And uh, they. they Go ahead. R rather than one of the sides winning, uh, they just abandon and they now hold it like tug of war. Right? It's on the Asian side. It, it's it's on the uh, like it's but, below well, the Asian side of Turkey too. It's not these contested hmm. cities that are still people still live in. They're occupied or, or under siege or whatever, but completely abandoned. And there's a lot of infrastructure there. Well, so you're I, saying that this is one big Fortnite map? <laughs> <laughs> it could I mean, be. I wasn't gonna, you know be gay about it but whatever <laughs> uh, you know me you can have a real exactly. running man show it's all the idea, other properties right? on the part of the island <laughs> since i said before the greek cigarettes have been forced the turkish so it's greece versus turkey here i guess so i really can't tell what's going on you want to read it ben uh, yeah, I, I could. Yeah, Britain has two large military bases in the unoccupied south of Cyprus, and Britain refuses to pay the rent for the bases. I mean, th I, this guy's crazy, so I have trouble believing, like, everything he says. I mean, if yeah. this is a confirmed abandoned city, then I believe that, obviously. It's just it's a hard time believing an entire yeah. city like that could be abandoned. This guy also I believes don't... aliens were there when Jesus was crucified on top of a pyramid. So... Um. You know, oh. well, the who's who's the, the guy reliable. in the blue with the black screen? Uh, Sin. Who's the one with what? Who I I don't know your name with oh, the black oh. screen behind you. Sinrise. Okay. Uh, what you were saying is like a whole city abandoned like that. Yeah. Uh, when the the Iraqis came into Kuwait, the entire city was essentially abandoned. And uh, I got to meet one of the photographers who went in uh, after, during the invasion, and he had pictures of the entire city, and it looks literally the exact same. It's so scary. There's nobody around. Everything's looted. And it's just like, how do you just pick up this entire city? And I've been to Kuwait City. It's a bustling town. It's just like any major city. Yeah. And then to imagine everything gone, it, it freaks you out. Yeah, yeah. That one, yeah. yeah, it's freaking me out. I mean, I had no <laughs> idea that any such thing even existed. Life. Yeah. I mean, no go zone. That's what happens when you have refugees, right? Everything there is, that you see there is completely yes, there's empty. Cranes. There are no people there at all. Okay, okay, okay. So, that little title you just had at the bottom, the world media avoids. Dude. There's nothing to talk about. It's a non-story. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's a contested territory that's been contested for the last, what, 40, 50 years? Yeah. Fuck you. Get over it. Go Put the camera down, dude.
I mean, it's it's interesting, yeah. right? Well, he's going to take something and that's uncommon right. and weave his conspiracy theories into it. it you it's know? interesting, but it's I mean, not that's, news. That's good fodder for that. It's yeah, Billy, you're right. It's interesting, but it's not like, dude, you don't need the conspiracy to go with it. It's why interesting isn't, enough. Why isn't you the media talking about something that's been going on for fifty years with no with no advancement <laughs> on either side? If you need the world to make sense and need that to be simple, then. Yeah, you know this, well, world, this contributes quite the well. The world to does that make kind of sense. Thinking. It is simple, but simple people, no, it's, simple it's, people it's, accept it's, answers that don't make sense. Like there's a fucking the fairy is, in the sky the world that is grants them wishes. It's true, and some people just cannot accept that the that well, the, the world's not rudderless, right? So like they come up with they say come up with some grand design, some conspiracy. Well, there, there is there a, is a grand design and conspiracy. There is humans there are are definitely conspiracies, but there's no grand. There, there is you a grand know, design. That's why we. That's why we had such a boom when the baby boomers are, were around. People designed lifestyles that could be sold because they knew there was more people in masses to have the lifestyles sold to. And when the babies were babies, they sold uh, b b baby clothes. When Not they really when they went to school, they they sold school clothes. It's 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 the way that uh, civilizations are 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 founded. It's it's it, there is very much someone manning the rudder and, and guiding people from cradle to grave. It's there is a method of control to these these lifestyles. Most people need that to exist. Most people can't I break away. I think there are small systems of control that are effective, but there is no one grand world government or secret government or any grand conspiracy that spans any any major length of time. No, you're uh, wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, uh, the world is run uh, by Satan um, worshippers. They want all of us to unintentionally ben, worship Satan. Ben, reptilian Satan mm. worshippers, Ben. They're reptilian. Yeah. I mean, and that's I why mean, they hide it in the media one. to, des it's to all desensitize Hollywood, us. Yeah, because yeah, every once in a while, these reptilians, they fuck up and go half reptile mid-interview. Right. And that's why we need the media that's to say, oh, well, that was just a CGI like when graphic the interface. Functioned, that was fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're scheming behind the scenes to control all of our lives from from behind the scenes but yeah every once in a while they oops i actually heard this city okay. is where tupac and bob marley and elvis went when they wanted to retire this is a retirement center for the elite it's actually yeah uh, that's where all the forever 27 club yeah. ends up yep that's, kurt cobain's there hitler's there probably too hitler, well hitler i heard died last He's year in within South the America. confines oh, oh, oh okay yeah i mean the head of walt disney is there the Bilderbergs. My, my question is, if they were all there, they got to cook food, right? So oh, yeah, the, there's there's the uh, smoke they, from the fires, you know? Well, I mean, they, 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 heat, they have they have they recycle all the exhaust. They have chimneys, dude. Oh, the, the smoke's not go up. Yeah, they, they have they have chimneys. It's underground circulation. If you if you yeah. know one thing about the Cypriots is that they were once a very a very rich country. They have they, and this is the elite coming here. This, that's why you get shot if you go in there because there's one little, uh, basically, basically a spa in the middle of all this where everybody gets to live like kings. They fuck, they have orgies with that manimal guy from the, the kitchen in the last they, video. Yeah. And they take the life extension drugs. Yeah. You know what? I, you guys got me. <laughs> Biggie and Tupac are in there. The logic. It's just flawless. Biggie and Tupac are running an orgy with TLC and, or the Left Eye, Lisa Left Eye Lopez and Aaliyah. Ah, this is insane. Is, China is it? There? Yeah. Is it? <laughs> now it's insane. Yeah, yeah China's there. They're She's drawing the line. Here, China's here. got a strap yeah. on because Amy Winehouse stopped taking the wang, so China had to break out the fucking rubber dilly and slap it around on her. All right. Uh, I think it's time to end the show. <laughs> hey, hey, Ben. Yes. I hate to be that guy. Can I can I plug my buddy real quick? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I his, mean, his, his channel is uh, Rural Royalty. He uh, just uploaded a vlog. It's pretty cool. Go check it out. RuralRoyalty.com. RuralRoyalty.com. Yeah. Nice. He's a professional photographer. He's great at what he does. Say it one more time, video, and he did because an say it one more time. Rural royalty. All right, and now the insomnist. Plug your shit. We do a live stream every Wednesday at 7 p.m. and every Saturday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, you can go to my channel, and there's links to insomnist there, or you can just type insomnist into Google. I think there's a link in the description here, too. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so go check it out. 
And thank you very much for that, Ben. And can I just say, dude, th like, it, this has been amazing for me because Duranka Peasants and you in particular were, were definitely a major inspiration for me to even, like, get started doing any this YouTube shit. So for me to be here right now on your show is, is pretty fucking amazing for me. Thank dude. you. So thank you. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, uh, to the rest of you, have a good night. We'll see you uh, coming up here on Saturday. And I'll be having an orgy. No. And you guys just got another sub? Let me get an invite to that. In the beginning, there was nothing. And then there was the Drunken Peasants Podcast. Drunken Peasants. Drunken Peasants. Drunken Peasants. Drunken peasants from the strangest corners of the internet Gonna get TP'd by Billy and Ben You know where you can find them at Get ready cause they're gonna kick your Drunken peasants Drunken peasants Drunken peasants Drunken peasants